And um, I can't believe I'm back with another live stream and so angry, uh, and you are too. Let's have a quick look through the comments. Um, Dalek says, I couldn't believe his team selection yesterday. Surely he has, he has to be far more attack-minded for the next two games. Let me know if you can hear me as well. That's, the, that's, that's important. Um, UTD7 United 7264 says, Lee, don't worry, there's always next season. Yes, there's always next season, but... <laughs> But I'm really disappointed about this season. Well, me, Tom Herbman is here. Hello, walk with me, Tom Herbman. Has a YouTube channel. Subscribe to him. He's a Blackpool fan. Goes on walks. You can follow him around. Uh, hi. Hi, Tom. Daz, BFC1 says, The North Stand have made it clear to Critch how we feel now. If he hadn't got the message before yesterday, he certainly did. And I'm glad you did. The edgy ones is here. Hello. Hello, George. Um, uh, must win games and drops two players that change games. I'm confused what goes through his head. We need an experience number two with him or it's game over next season also. Do you think he's going to be here next season? Would we? Do we? <laughs> are we going to have any fans in the stadium next season? I mean, for me, um, I, I have been talking to Pickle before the game, before it started. And basically I was saying that like this was like, we're in a position, Blackpool, where, you know, we're safe, you know, 60 points. It's not a gamble to take a risk. We needed to really go for it and go at them. And we just didn't, did we? We just didn't. And I can't understand why we're playing the way we are when we've got basically nothing to lose and everything to gain if we just go for it. Yeah, Stephen Huntley says, hi, uh, hi, Lee. Here we are again. <laughs> Indeed we are. Um, Peter Donnelly says, Slot Car Pete, if you follow him on uh, Twitter, uh, says, Hello, Lee, another Dross game yesterday. That's one goal now in the last 450 minutes of football. That does not inspire. I mean, what was Simon Sadler be thinking? You know, he's gone on radio, hasn't he? And he's publicly said, you know, Critchley's the man, Critchley's, you know, he's going to change everything. And he's just completely kicked him in the bollocks, basically, hasn't he? With some of the worst football we've seen in months. He's already won a game, scored a goal since Simon Sadler publicly backed him. And uh, he must be sick. Simon Sadler must, must be really sick. He, he must really be. Stephen Trainer says, has he been sacked yet? Well, I don't think Simon Sadler's going to sack him, and I don't know. Right, Ian Barron is here. Hello, Ian. Uh, very good evening, everyone watching. Hope you're well and having a great day. It's your favourite Darlington FC fan. But yes, uh, Ian Barron is a Darlington fan. And no matter what we go through, how much we suffer, Darlington suffer worse, don't they, Ian? It's, it's uh, yes, right. The sound is great. Okay, that's good to hear. Picture was a bit of a nightmare. <laughs> or, am I going to the Cambridge game? Am I? No, I'm not going. Why would I? I can't think of one reason why I'd want to go to Cambridge. Jesus, honestly, I can't. I, I can't take any more. Twin G fan says, uh, "How does that's what's it, Gromit? By the way, uh, how does a team like Lincoln get a better chance of playoffs than Blackpool?" Well. I don't know, they've just turned it around in Lincoln, haven't they? I mean, they've gone on a run and we've gone on a complete opposite. When we played Lincoln only a few short weeks ago, we beat them. They didn't look much, did they? And we have gone from there to what we are now, which is just absolutely bloody dreadful, isn't it? I mean, it really is. It's It's awful. Well, this is the thing, isn't it? I can't see Critch staying if the vast majority of fans are hostile. Well, it's coming to that, isn't it, really? I mean, he really has let us down. I mean, I can't completely blame Critch for yesterday because the players just didn't look interested to me. They didn't look like they were trying to get in the playoffs or putting their lives on the line. Funnily enough, I watched a video of mine um well, today, actually, I've watched it, re-watched it today, and it was the um, the 30th anniversary of Billy Ayres' Wembley winning promotion side, you know, with Dave Bamber and David Ayres and Steve McElhargy. It's a good video if you search for it on my videos. And I interviewed um, Paul Groves and David Ayres, McElhargy, uh, Trevor Sinclair, and they all said the same thing about Billy Ayres. And they all said that he was a man that would 
make them feel like they were something amazing when they got out on that pitch. And he would make them want to run through a brick wall to win a game. That's how he inspired them. And I do not see that with Critchley at all. These players do not want to run through a brick wall for him. They don't come out as if they're full of confidence. And I don't, I think when I, when you watch that back, just watch it and see what them players said about Billy Air and, you know, it's chalk and cheese. It really is. Nicholas Hindle is here. We will have to start next season all over again. Loan players out, loan players in. Do we like loan players in all the time? Would we like to see some signings that actually made you think, wow, blimey, you know what I mean? <laughs> Every time we try and sign anybody and, and, you know, put some money on the table, we never get them, do we? We never get them. They always come a bit from left field, but they're never anybody that makes you go other than Jordan Rose. I mean, Jordan Rose was, I actually said when I heard we'd signed him, I was like, oh my gosh, that is, now that is, you know, I know Jordan Rose, played him lots of times. I've, you know, nothing gets me off my, my seat. I, I mean, I didn't know Josh Bowler, but once I, I saw him play in that preseason, I thought this, this lad's a bit special and nothing like that's, you know, we've not signed anybody like that, have we? Um, it's just, it's just whole destroyingly bad. And, it, and, and as I said before, it all seemed to come from the moment, from the moment that Simon Sadler said, basically, I've got to build a train, you know, I've got to, I've got to build a stand got to build the East stand, got to develop this training ground and get all that done. And I haven't really got the, the funds to do everything. And, you know, the team is his kind of his least priority. And I think since then, you know, funds are available. I don't know, whatever, but he hasn't really gone for it as he since then. And we've just nosedived since that moment. We have nosedived and we still haven't got the stand started and we still haven't got the training ground started. Have we? Nothing's happening. No builders are going in anything. So since he said that, and that was like two years ago, things plummeted and we haven't actually started any of these things that he was talking about. Ian Nelly is here. He might resign. Well, wouldn't that be good for any sword? Do you think he will? Do you think he will fall on his sword? I mean, it, it really is a very unhappy place, isn't it? Bluefield Road. It's incredibly unhappy. I mean, there was no, I mean, what do you think about the atmosphere yesterday? There was just like no atmosphere, was there at all? The South was very, you know, was very limp as a, limper than it normally is. The North, we couldn't hear you singing on the South. Normally we, we can hear you. Second half, there was a little, you know, when he brought the substitutions on, which was a surprise at 60 minutes that he brought three substitutions on. But as somebody pointed out in a view from Tara Red that, you know, he, he brought the three substitutions on and then took, you know, and then changed it back again, didn't he? when he took Sonny Carey off. So I don't know. Did he really do? Did we just end up doing what we always do? I don't know. Right. Daz BFC says a home game is a 180 mile trip for me. He's making it really hard for me to want to make the trip. Yeah. To be honest with you, Daz, it's a two mile trip for me and it's, he's making it hard for me to make a two mile trip. So God knows a 180 mile trip. Honestly, I'm really struggling going i'm really struggling i mean i hope you've all watched my video you know i put all that effort into the video and it's just i just feel like why why bother lee why bother doing all this uh who do you think will get promoted to league one and relegated from the championship good question uh well i think wrexham are coming up aren't they I, I, i'm not i don't really look at anything else <laughs> Uh, it looks like Rotherham are coming down. I, I think Rotherham are definitely coming down. Huddersfield are teetering, aren't they? They could get out of it. I see that um, who else is coming down? I don't know because I've got my phone switched off, so I just can't look at this. I, I switched my phone off, by the way, so we don't get any nuisance things going on while we were streaming. Steve Huntley says... Surely this sacking form now, he's got to go. It, it it does feel like, you know, I think somebody said that's five games, one goal. We're going for the playoffs. We've been going for the playoffs for the last five games, haven't we? So, you know, since Wigan, we were, you know, trying to get this run together to get to the playoffs. And in five games, we've scored one goal. And we never looked like scoring yesterday, did we? I said to I said to Pickle, you know, you're watching the game and 
we're on the attack and they're coming forward and it's all great. And then when it gets to the edge of the box, it all falls apart, doesn't it? We either, you know, CJ puts a, puts a ball across just straight to a defender or we miss kick or somebody slips over and falls at the very last minute or this just something goes wrong. And you kind of like, you get to that stage where you don't believe they can score. You know what I mean? You're not getting excited in your seat thinking this is going to be a goal because you just, they make scoring a goal look absolutely like the hardest thing in the world to do. Steve Trainer says, if not sacked, he should walk away. United 764. So did you know that Wallace and Gromit is set in Wigan? No, I didn't know that. I didn't know that. That's uh, that's news. That's news for me. Ian Barron says, yes, uh, indeed, Lee. Thanks, much appreciated. Yes, we all know the sufferings of Darlington FC. And normally everything kind of goes back to Darlington FC. We normally find some tenuous link to Darlington FC. But uh, yes, it should be attack, attack, football. It should. It should have been attack, attack, football. I mean, you know, you, I, I think I put it in the thing, you know, the, the mighty the mighty Wickham Wanderers roll into town. You know, the, the safe, they were, they were on 50 points. They're more or less safe going nowhere, a team, you know, that hadn't done particularly well. And if we'd have won the last few games, we'd have been out of sight on them, wouldn't we? We'd have been miles ahead. If we'd have won three out of those last five games, we would have been just, just miles ahead. They weren't, it wasn't Manchester United rolling into Blackpool, was it? It was the mighty Wickham Wanderers. And we play against these teams. I've said it before that we, we play it as if we're playing somebody like Real Madrid. We have no bottle against them to take them on or, or attack them or go at them. And it, it's just, you know, you I said it in the last stream, the way that Holloway would attack those teams in the championship and also the Premier League, he'd have a go at them. You know what I mean? He'd have a go, throw the kitchen. I mean, we did throw the kitchen sink in the end, but it was all too late. We could have scored right in the last kick of the game, really, but so could they. I mean, they hit the crossbar and and, and the the post didn't they <laughs> back in the corner i was just if you've seen the video i was just i just got down to the front to do to do my little uh, thing i was at the front and it was right in front of me just i could have easily scored michael haig is here hello michael uh, michael says evening lee it has all gone pear-shaped it has indeed the P-E-A-R, pear-shaped. The business model that Critch promised Sadler has backfired. We don't know what Critch promised Sadler, do we? Do we know that for sure? Were we there at that meeting? Or was that on that video that they did? I don't know. Let, let me know. But do we actually know that there was a biz business model that Critch promised Sadler? I, I don't know. Uh, and you will explain later in the box of to Toys We Trust. So maybe you do know. That was what was said at the meeting. I don't know. Am I watching Derby versus Pompey? Is it is it on tonight? No, I, I'm not actually going to be watching. If it is on tonight, I'm not going to be watching it. We're doing this live live moaning on the Charles TV. And I just feel like moaning all the time. I'm so angry with everything at the moment. So no, I'm not watching Derby versus Pompey. I will start maybe doing a few watch alongs if people. Just post in the comments if you want me to do more of this stuff. If you enjoy doing the watch alongs, may well do some of that in the week and just try and uh, enjoy myself a bit more than what I'm doing. I am actually sick of moaning about Blackpool all the time. I'm sick and tired of it. I'm sure you all are as well. And it really does get you down, doesn't it? You know, I know people say that you know we didn't have a club for five years or through the boycott, we should be just happy that we've got football to watch, but it doesn't work that way. It just does not make you happy. It, it ruins your weekend. Even though you had five years without football, it still ruins your weekend, doesn't it? I don't know if it ruins yours, but it, it, it ruins mine. Um, yes. Now I was asked before, if Critchley goes, who would you want next? I haven't got a clue. I don't watch any other team other than Blackpool. I couldn't tell you a good manager from a bad manager. I just want, I just want, if we can find a manager, kind of like Ian Holloway, but youngest, somebody who likes to attack teams, somebody who has no fear, a manager that uh, can make changes that make a difference. You know, I mean, really, Critch could have changed it after 25 minutes, couldn't he? Yeah, if, he if he really had the bottle, I mean, they had... 
they had that big giant of a centre half that we tried to sign in January and didn't quite get him, but he had Lavery in his pocket from about the the fifth minute, didn't he? Lavery was getting no change out of him whatsoever. I don't think he picked up one ball. The guy was just head and shoulders above him. He couldn't win a header. <laughs> Lavery was just running around like a lost sheep to me, to be honest. He hadn't got a clue how to get... And you could have took him off after 25 minutes and thought, I'll tell you what, let's bring Kuasi on against this big guy because this guy's just, you know, he's having a field day, isn't he? He's just meat and, meat and, meat and veg to him, isn't he, the whole thing. And, and a brave manager would have probably done that Critch, no. Steve Woolley. Hello, Steve. He says, Ali, I'm fed up of Blackpool having so many chances at goal and no one knows how to put it away. Get Critch to send them all to spec savers. Yeah, it's just, we're just clueless, aren't we? We, we don't look like scoring a goal. I mean, I, I was talking about those goals that like Jerry Eight scored when we were in League One last time. And, you know, the one where he took all the defence on, went round one, beat one, beat another, beat one, and put it in the corner. And that one where he ran full length of the pitch and then just took a defender on and then just, just buried it. You know, have we got anybody who can do that? Could even, you'd think for one minute, you could do that. I mean, Lavery, uh, and I've said this loads of times, he does a lot of running around. He does a lot of running around but he's always running around without the ball. He doesn't do much running with the ball. He just chases all the time as if he's trying to get to the ball, but never really quite ever makes it. But he's running around. He's busy, isn't he? But he's busy without the ball. He never has the ball. It drives me mental. Thought you said you will dominate League One. Well, you would anybody would think that. Well, you just come down from the championship. You've been playing teams like Norwich, you've been playing teams like Sheffield United, you've been playing Burnley, you've been playing Sunderland, you've been playing Stoke, you've been playing Norwich City, the Nobbers. All these teams are, are, are way, way bigger than where we are now. And you think you would come down and our team of a, a team that really could have with a bit of luck, could have stayed up in the championship. You'd have thought they'd have been good enough to, you know, to, to, to dominate League One. And uh, on our day, we are good enough to dominate any team. We beat, you know, Portsmouth 4-0 away from home. It's a great day. But the trouble is, we don't have very many of those great days. Most of the time, we're absolute crap. And that's the, the problem. We just, we can't keep it up consistently. Steve H says, to add some balance, should the players carry the can for some of these performances? Well, let, post in the comments, let, let me know. Do you think the, the players are to blame? I mean, they didn't look like they wanted to brick, run through a brick wall yesterday. It was very disjointed. You know, Pickle was saying that it was, you know, uh, and I was, you know, we were just weren't, Patsy's were just, you know, not finding somebody. There was a, I can't remember, at first half, there was a ball, who was it from, into the box. And it was just nowhere near. It was like nowhere near. Never going to get it. So, yeah, I do think the players are a, a lot to blame. But why are they playing so bad? All right. Uh, let's just get back to the comment. I have to go through these a bit quickly. There's quite a lot coming in. As I said before, what class players are going to want to come and play in this shit system? Well, that it is going to take quite a bit of convincing, isn't it? If anybody has a look at... Blackpool scoring record and defending record and is a great player. Would you want to come to this, join in with this team that are just so poor? Probably not. It's going to be a hard sell, isn't it? It's going to be a hard sell. Maybe it would be an easy sell if we didn't have Critchley anymore. We had a new manager <laughs> who said, we're not going to do any of that <laughs> this year. I'll tell you this year, it's, it's, honestly, it's either got to have Critchley to tell people when they come that he's changed his whole modus operandi and it's going to be a, a total different way of playing football. He's had an epiphany. He's, he had a dream or something one night and he woke up and he realised that what he was doing was wrong. But we need somebody else who can, who's going to play a different way and can convince people to come. It is going to be a hard selling summer. I agree. Crazy Football Vlogs. Crazy Football Vlogs is a Blackpool vlogger. He has a YouTube channel. Check him out. He does all sorts of crazy football vlogs. Uh, it's been a poor season. We need to have a good summer clear out and maybe sign a good few players and get a winning team together that is able to get us back up. And hopefully planning is underway now. 
hope, but I, I feel we, we, we don't plan for these things. <laughs> yes, this is the thing. Are the players playing to Critch's instruction? Well, in his interviews, you would like to believe what he says, that he kind of doesn't really understand what's going on the pitch because that's not what he's telling him. So maybe they're not playing to Critch's instruction because he does moan about it quite a lot that he can't actually quite believe what he's seen. So maybe they're not. Right, Tom Herdman says, uh, I was there yesterday as I, as I was there yesterday as I work in Scotland at the moment with Ainsley work, so I haven't had time to go to games. But I was back yesterday, but I won't be back till next season now. I work as a chef and work as YouTube as hobbies. Yes, and I don't blame you for not coming back, Tom. Do your job in Scotland and stay away from it because it's not, it's not even worth coming down. I'm sure that should say, and I wasted my time yesterday coming down. <laughs> it cost me a lot of money and I wish I'd never done it. <laughs> Is that how that should end, maybe? Right. Uh, Ian Barrister, do you think it's where Blackpool is in the country that doesn't help with your signings? Um, no, not really. You know, Jerry Yates couldn't, you know, on his interview, couldn't wait to get here for Pepsi Max the big one. You know what I mean? No, it's, I don't think it's got anything to do with that at all. I just think that we don't really try hard enough or spend enough or put enough, put enough, enough effort in if we miss out. You know, we put a bid in for... Uh, you know, the defender from Wickham, low. And did we put another bid in? It got rejected. Did we try? Did we try hard to get him? No. Well, the teams managed to come back with improved offers and get him. We don't. Connor Ferguson. Hello, Connor. I'm a Derby fan. And I always like Blackpool and the fans. It's a shame a good club has had a bad run over the years. Yes, it is. And we, of course, you know, we like Derby because we stood. Side by side with us, Joe and our boycott, which was which was great. Not many did, so we always have a soft spot for Derby. Um, so yeah, and it's good to see that you're doing well and you've got over your bloody owner troubles because you know it's not good. It's it's terrible, and we all like hate the EFL. All of us basically, don't we? Um, Brian Murray says, "Highly, it's been a dismal season, mainly because our play has been too predictable." Aimless passing, even when we're losing, because the coach insists on rotating the team selection. There's no continuity. That is a problem. He does he does change it all the time. The team is so disjointed, they struggle to work together. We should be beat. Right, I don't like to say this. We should be beating teams like Wigan, uh, Wigan but we should be beating teams that are mid-table, going nowhere. Is really, I think that's what, what you were saying. Just a team that had nothing to play for, really. If it lost, it wouldn't have mattered. Uh, yeah, they're not Real Madrid or Manchester United, are they? But we don't know how to dominate the game or create chances. No, we don't. We don't. We don't dominate the game at all, do we? We just our only domination is in our own half. You can. We. It's not long before we lose it in their half, is it? We don't keep hold of the ball very long when we have the ball in their half, and we generally have to keep it by passing back again. We just don't seem to be able to pass our way through and get a shot in. You know what I mean? We just don't seem to have that ability at the moment. Uh, our shots on goal are abysmal. They indeed are. Midfield are not doing enough and you're just waiting for the defence to make a mistake. Very honest and I kind of agree with you on everything there. Nicholas Hindle says we have the players but not necessarily in the right order. Yes, all the right notes but all in the wrong order. Sheffield Wednesday is going down. It does look like that, doesn't it? Sheffield Wednesday, Rotherham. Yeah, sorry, I forgot about them. They, they do look like they're coming straight back down. The mighty Sheffield Wednesday. So we'll have them to play next season. We've got Wrexham coming up. Uh, who else is coming up? Notts County are coming up, are they, I think? Stockport. Uh, I don't know. You have to tell me who the because I say I've not got my phone on at the moment. Rob C says, from Sadler's interview a few weeks back, it was basically him saying, Neil has next season or he is gone. So don't get our hopes up, he will be sacked. Yes, he will, but do you think he might have he might have restructured his thinking over the last five weeks? Seeing I mean he must be looking at it. He, he, he must be looking at that crowd yesterday and hearing if he was was he there yesterday, but if he was there yesterday, he must have looked at how sort of quiet it all was, where all the atmosphere has gone and Bluefield Road is not intimidating when no, you know, when we're not bang at it. And it was just highly disappointing yesterday. You, you, you know, you could tell the crowd had the stuffing knocked out of them. The players 
didn't look motivated. If I'd have been owner, I'd, I'd, I'd have had him in this morning to find out what the heck's going on. I really would. I've said that on the last stream, but I really would have him in this morning to find out what, you know, Critch, what the fuck was that, really? Right. Do you think defeat to the cause next Tuesday will be the final nail in his coffin? It won't help. I've got to, if we get beaten by, by the cods next Tuesday, it, it honestly, Bluefield road is going to be hell in it. It is going to be sacked in the morning, isn't it? It's not a chant I like, it's not a chant that in Holloway like, but I tell you, it, it, it's going to be terrible, isn't it? God, if we lose to them, Jesus, I can't, I can't, honestly, I can't, I can't even think, I can't even think about that. That's just like, that's just, oh my God, that's the worst thing ever. Russell Mark Lambert is here. I think the season's over. Critically, no plan B. It may be time for a change at the top. Look at teams like Portsmouth, been in that division for ages. Now on the verge of promotion. Yeah. I don't see this football. I don't see this brand of football as being a brand of football that can possibly get us out of this division. I don't know about you, but I don't think this is the football that does it. It, it might be good enough to kind of this kind of football to stay in the Premier League or something. Maybe you can play this kind of football and hang in there. But to me, it's not a winning, it's not a winning brand, is it? It's not a top of the league. It's not, it's not football that's going to have you top of the league. It's not, I'm sorry, Critch, I hate your football. I was saying this to somebody today, actually. I loved Critch. I loved him. You know, he got us up. He did really well in the championship and I loved him. And it kind of broke my heart a bit when he left. And when he came back, I forgave him and I kind of, in my head, I liked the idea of him. I liked us getting back to being how we were, you know, and seeing all that future that we had with Critch. I liked the idea of him. But now I think I actually hate him. I really do. I hate his football. I hate what I'm seeing. I hate the way he's making me feel. I hate the way he's ruining my weekends. I hate the fact that I don't want to go away. I hate the fact that I don't really want to go two, out, two, two minutes down the road to a game. I hate the fact that I've got to edit a video for five hours that I don't want to edit. I hate being on here moaning. I like to bring joy. I, I, I've gone from loving him to hating him. I can't listen to his match interviews anymore. He just pisses me off, to be honest. Everything he says just totally pisses me off. And uh, if I'm if I'm hating him, then some of you must really despise him. Try and find and sign Alfie May in the summer transfer window. Who is he? Let me know who he is. Where will we get him from? How much wages is he on? Because unless he can afford, unless he wants to take a massive wage cut, if he's a good player, I don't know. Bobbo is here. Hello, Bobbo. He's a Huddersfield Town fan. We will be with you next season there is a chance though that you could get out of it so um plymouth have sat their manager aren't they so they might be in free fall and you manage to get out of it normally you like the championships everton aren't you always looking like you're gonna go down and get out of it at the last minute right wicker made six changes and had one eye on wembley we looked no better than them no, we didn't. They were actually singing, weren't they? What few fans that they brought, you know, were going to Wembley. And I felt very jealous because we should have been going. And I think if we had have got, if we'd have won that semi final and, and got to the final, I think it would have done us a world of good. I don't think that did us any good whatsoever losing that. It might not be the manager, it's the stupid players. <laughs> well, kind of. I know what you're saying, but they are, you know, they don't. It doesn't seem to be inspiring them to play the best they can. And Mighty and Baron filling us in on Darlow. The Mighty Darlow have won seven games out of the last 10 games. The Great Escape is on. Steve Watson's Black and White Army. Come on, Darlow. See, isn't that good? How good would we feel now if we'd have won seven out of the last 10 games? If we could only do what Darlow did. And, we're and we were going for it. Well, you know, we were up there, weren't we? Peter Donnelly again. Says, in theory, we have the most exciting player in League One in Karamoko Dembele. He should be tearing this division apart. Now, I'm going to be controversial here. I like him at times, but there's a lot of times where, I'm sorry, but he just goes down way too easy. My God. You know, they're comparing with Lionel Messi, and I'll tell you what, I'm actually watching Messi comes to America at the moment and you never see Lionel Messi going down just because somebody just 
bar, you know, just puts a little bit of pressure on him. Any little bit of it, every centre half must know if they just lean on him a little bit, he just goes down. And the referees can see it all the time. He just goes down like a feather. He's he, he's not. I don't think he's half the time. I think he's a waste of space. If I'm being honest, I just just stand on your feet for God's sake. Come on, down. He's literally like a feather. You can push him over like a feather. And that's, I just don't like, I, I just don't like about him. Lincoln will go up, says United. Yeah. Certainly the team in form, the banging form at the moment. There's this thing where they may have just peaked too early and they may have that mental block where they didn't beat us. But if, if, if they do, obviously we're not going to be in them, but I will be cheering on Lincoln. And I've said this already because of Jake, Tong, who's a good friend of our channel, and I know how much losing to us really, really destroyed him in the summer. I know how heartbroken he was, and I'd like him, I'd like them to do him, do it for him. So I'll be cheering Lincoln on in the playoffs. Absolutely. You won 3 1 yesterday. Brilliant. Ian Barron here to make us all feel miserable. Right. Ryan Dunbar is here. Hello, Ryan. Evening, Lee. I'm going to my first away day trip at Carlisle. I was so looking forward to it. Then the pill decided to ruin that excitement by playing shout. <laughs> Indeed. You were probably thinking, go to Link, you know, go to Carlisle. There could be a great chance. There'll be thousands there. There'll be nobody there. There'll be you on your own, Ryan. It'll just be you. Nobody's going. What does it matter? It's nice to see you in the stream, anyway. Nice to hear from you. Blackpool FC Fan TV, another YouTube channel, Blackpool YouTube channel, young up and coming YouTube channel. Uh, make sure you subscribe to them as well. Connor, it's, it's been a few times on, on my videos. What, what have you got to say, Connor? The performance have been getting better and better since Wigan. And the thing letting us down is the final third. Wickham's keeper was unbelievable and kept them in the game. Couldn't really see that from the South, to be honest. But yeah, he, he did pull some saves off. But I don't know if you think Jordan Rose would be on, you might have got one past him. <laughs> but yeah, he did pull some good saves off. No, Blackpool are not the biggest club in England. That uh, title would go to Sheffield Wednesday, probably. I think they're the, the largest, aren't they? The largest team. <laughs> I'm kidding, of course. Uh, who would you say was the biggest biggest team in England? And United, probably. Uh, yeah, Man United are probably the, the biggest. Uh, Chelsea are the most successful. Uh, City are the most successful at the moment. But yeah, United are probably probably the biggest. We're definitely not the biggest, but we were we we're one of the best at one time when uh, when football was played in black and white. <laughs> we were uh, right. Dallas BFC, Critchley changed it after twenty minutes. He hasn't. Changed. Well, of course, that's what I'm saying. But you want a manager? That's what I'm saying. Critchley doesn't do that. He doesn't change after 20, unless somebody's injured, obviously, in 25 minutes, then he has to. But no, I mean, that was adventurous for him on Saturday. He wanted 60 minutes, three substitutions. I was like, oh my God, we didn't do any good anyway. It didn't help us because the players didn't really, the players didn't really get the crowd going. The crowd didn't get the players going. The whole thing was down. We never looked like scoring. It was just painful yesterday. Steve Huntley says, considering Sadler's hard for ex-managers, it's got to be Ollie for me. See, it's another one. I know what you're saying, but we're back to this same old thing. We do not want Blackpool fans divided. And so many people cannot forgive Ollie for what he keeps saying about, you know, the Oystons. He's not doing himself any favours. And I, I wouldn't... I would have wanted him back if he'd not said all this about the Oysters, but because he keeps going on about how bloody magnificent and how wrong we were to boycott, then quite frankly, he can just shove it where the sun don't shine. Yeah, for me, and I loved him, but I, I don't want him back for that for that reason. Dunbar says, absolutely not, Steve. You will beat Cambridge 3-0. Miracles can happen. I'm not saying they won't. Yes, he did have passion, but unfortunately, uh, a manager that doesn't have the fans united is a manager that has us divided. And it, he's going to divide us just like Appleton's dawn, just like Critchley's dawn. And that's the big problem. And if, if, I, was, if I was advising 
Simon Sadler, I would say, stop doing it, Simon. Stop bringing in managers that you know are going to divide the fans. Stop it. Your one superpower here with the fans is this fan base is magnificent when they're all together and pulling together and behind the manager. You've got one of the greatest fan bases in the country, pound for pound. We are louder than anybody pound for pound. There's no team in this country as loud as Blackpool fans when we're together. But the trouble is we're not together and we're not happy and you just keep making the same mistake and it's got to stop. You've got to think outside the box and you've got to get a manager in next time that that wants to play this Blackpool way, this attacking way, what we all want to see. Nobody, nobody would be complaining yesterday if that had been a game where we'd have had 25 shots the keeper had pulled off wonder save we'd hit the crossbar hit hit the post three times they, they cleared off the line we'd had a goal disallowed you know a penalty two three penalties denied by a referee we'd all nobody would have minded but was it that game playing trying to get yourself in the playoffs was it that game no it wasn't it, it was it was like a Sunday afternoon bloody stroll, wasn't it? No urgency until about the last 10 minutes where we kind of did throw the... But why were we not throwing the kitchen sink at it right from the time we started? Why didn't Critchley say, right, lads, we've got four home games. This, if you win this one, it'll set us on a, a road. We could win four games in a row. We could be blooming flying. You know, somebody could slip up. Lincoln could slip up. Believe, but no, no. Yes, he is a snake yeah, for that reason. Derby are winning. Well, that's good. That's good to hear. Pete Donnelly says, yeah, sometimes does it make you think, has Critch lost the dressing room? Has the squad lost all its morale? It looks like that, doesn't it? I don't know whether he's lost the, I don't know whether he's lost the dressing room, but the, the players look like beaten, don't they really, with it? They don't, they don't look full of confidence. They look shot of confidence, really. I mean, CJ was playing really well a, a few months ago and we were all seeing his name and he, he was looking brilliant. And now he's just looking like a player that's just lost all confidence in everything. What was he playing in left back? Was he playing his left back? Just, it was just, it was just pants. Uh, Random said, that's a point about Blackpool's location. There's a lot of lower league clubs in Scotland that play in South Scotland that are struggling because the good players are in Glasgow, Edinburgh. Well, yeah, but... We're not, we're not in that market, are we? We're not competing with for like Premier League players who want to play in London or Manchester or big, you know. We're we're in League One. I mean, what's the choices of where you go and play in League One? You want to play at Wickham Wanderers, you know, the Barnsley. I mean, I mean, none of it's just none of it's really inspiring, is it? As a footballer, I I I don't really see location. In fact, I would say that Blackpool is one of the more glamorous locations in League One, not in the Premier League, but in in League in League One, definitely. Who doesn't like Blackpool? I know, I know they all say Blackpool's a shit doll. I want to go home, but it's great, isn't it? You know, it's great Blackpool when it's all swinging. Pleasure Beach is going thousands here on a bank holiday. It's bloody marvelous. There's, there's nowhere better. Yep. Uh, Steve Huntley says, we're never going to score while we constantly pass back. Well, indeed, we don't have anybody who dare take it, take them on. Hello, Gary Cronshaw. You were wrong. You were wrong, wrong, wrong. We didn't win, but nice to see you. To see you nice. Right. Uh, Russell C says, instead of interviewing fans before the game, we'd love to see Lee wait at the entrance for Critch to come out and ask him the real questions. Their fans, they won't bloody let me. They won't let me. I won't have a, he won't, no. Nah. I'd be terrified if I bloody give it. Honestly, I'd love to, honestly, I would love to ask some serious questions. It'd be great, wouldn't it? I certainly would. Jamie Widdop is here. Hello, Jamie. Critch must have seen the reaction from the North Sands and realised he's losing the fans. Well, if he hasn't gathered that over the last few games, he's got to be blind. Uh, I'm glad they gave him some stick because he deserves some stick. He really did. He, he has really, really let us down from, I thought, with like 16, 17, maybe 18 games to go, I thought we, you know, at Christmas time, I thought we were in a good position to, to kind of go on. And we've just, yeah, we've had... It, it, He's had the bad luck of Jordan Rhodes, um, you know, getting injured and then getting injured again. It's 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 been tragic, but 
he's not playing us. He's not playing a system that Blackpool fans want to see. He's not. He's not setting it up in a way that looks like you know. It it, it looks doesn't it all the time like you know it, we're trying to win one nil. Well, I want to see a manager trying to win five nil. I do. And I want to see him try. I want to see a team trying to win five nil. I mean, I watch the women's football sometime, and, and and the women's footballers they want to win by twenty nil. A bit like when you're at school. You know, when you're at school, you just wanted to score all the time, didn't you? A match between your mates on at lunchtime. You just wanted to score and score and score. And if you got one, you want to you want to win ten nil. I want to see. I want to see a team like that. Not a team like this trying to scuff a one nil win. Lucky one nil win. So it's rubbish. But we're too soft as well. We're too soft. We're not in anybody's faces, are we? We're not going at the referee like they go. You know, there was a bit where we, we got booked for for Norburn's foot up high. And all the team was showing the referee, weren't they? The foot's up saying, you know, we don't do that. We don't do that. Yes, of course, we're going to stay up. Well, that's, that wasn't the goal. That wasn't the goal. I didn't think we'd ever go down, but... Uh, yeah. Right. Michael Hague says, Sadler is so stubborn like Critch to accept appointing the headmaster was completely the wrong decision. Yeah, well, it, it was the wrong decision. It's proving to be the wrong decision now, but it's, it's giving him a bloody, what, how many years? Five year, four year contract or some ridiculous amount of contract. And it's just, I, I don't understand him. I don't understand Simon Sadler. I don't know why he keeps appointing I don't know why he brought him back. He's the only man. He's the only manager in, in the world that stood out to him. What about all these managers that are, that, that are doing better than him? All right, I, I, you know, I don't want the guy from Steve Vinage. I can't stand his football. But all these managers are all above Critchley. So there was a, so there was a load of them. I mean, we're ninth, aren't we? So there's eight teams above us. So there's eight managers better than Critchley. He wasn't the only one. He just wasn't. He just didn't look hard enough. If you're watching this, Simon Sadler, you didn't, you didn't. Rick Dobson. Hello, Rick says, Rick, I don't mind losing games, but Neil Critchley needs to be seen to it, to be at least changing formation, but the same week in and week out. It's very predictable and very, very boring. Yeah, it is. I said this on the last stream that any manager that really looks at Blackpool, I mean, they, have to, they do have a bit more fear normally coming to Bluefield Road, but certainly away. You don't need to see the team sheet. You know how we like keep this team sheet secret. Don't you don't release it until like one hour before the game. So it's a, so nobody knows who you're playing. But every manager who's played Blackpool knows exactly how they're going to play and how to set up to beat us because we do the same thing every time. And they know that if they just get one goal, we're going to pass it around the back. And as long as they keep solid at the back, we have nobody that can actually really harm you other than Dembele. And if you just lean on him a little bit, he goes down. It's dead easy. It's, it, it's so easy defend against Blackpool. I mean, how many free kicks did we have on the edge of the box yesterday, you know, trying to get in the box? And we just don't do the things that you need to do to, to sway things in your favor. You know, what you're wanting all the time is to, 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 to be around their box and they're tripping you up and you're getting free kicks and uh, corners, free kicks, long throwings into the box. Just, we just, we, like I say, we're just spending half our time passing around in our own half. You know, we're, we're, we're getting better at that, but that doesn't, that doesn't create anything. Ryan Dunbar says, I never wanted him from the, whoops, come up. I never wanted him from the start, done sod all, all after he left uh, to credit a return indeed. Uh, Darren Harvey's just joined in, uh, just joined in. Critch has to go. Do we all think that he just has to go? Just Simon Sadler. I wonder if Simon Sadler's coming around to it because, I was thinking like uh, two months ago that Critch could turn it around. I'm sure Simon Sadler did, but I'm sure now he's watched all this shit for the last couple of months. So he must be thinking, you know what? I'm not sure he can turn it around. Because if because if I'm thinking it, I'm sure Simon Sadler must be thinking this is not gonna this is not working. Uh, Michael A said I knew he would change the tune on the headmaster eventually. I did tell you at the start of the season he was the wrong man. Well, I can't. There's, I know you want to be negative right from the start, Michael, and I, I know that, but as a Blackpool fan and as a football fan, you've got to believe. I have to believe. And eventually, you know, 
I don't believe now because I've seen it, but, but you've always got to have a bit of hope, haven't you? You can't just dismiss, too many people dismiss people straight away and it doesn't help. No, it doesn't help. The next manager, you can't, unless it's Holloway, of course, but the next manager, we, we, whoever it is, we've got to be behind the guy, you know? We've got to make them feel fantastic and great and, you know, you can't be behind them, right, 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 right. You can't be against them from the start. Paul Crisp. Hello, Paul. I'm an Imps fan. We are grateful to be where we are, even if it's League One. Well, yeah, you're doing you're doing really well. You're doing really well. So you should. You're playing good football. Everybody just wants to see good football. We, we wouldn't be bothered. We wouldn't be bothered if we were where we are now, but we'd be playing really, really good football and it was really entertaining and we all got entertained and we've been a bit unlucky and things haven't gone our way, but we're playing terrible football. Really, really bad. I can't think of it, of it ever being much worse than it is now, if I'm being honest. I can't. I can't think of football so bad, so so uninspiring, so drab. So, I mean, yesterday has to be, has to be the worst football I've seen in years. We just looked clueless, didn't we? Completely clueless. <laughs> Well, there we are. We didn't know that, but uh, Ryan Dummer says, I was right about Kar Karamoko Dembele. My Celtic supporting friend was right about him as well. All wind, but no fart. <laughs> yeah, he's just too lightweight for me. He, he just, I've never seen a player go down so easily all the time. Just, I mean, sometimes they do genuinely foul him, but he just, he just doesn't stay on his feet enough for me. To actually be any threat at all. He can do some really tricky stuff, but then just somebody just touches him and he's over and it's pointless. Gary Cronshaw said, I don't know why. Why did you get rid of Jordan Rowe? We haven't got rid of him. He's injured. He's gone back to Huddersfield to get fit for the playoff final. <laughs> he got injured. He got went off at Wigan. He's done something to his knee. So no, we didn't get rid of him. Just fortunately he's injured. Right. Ridian Williams says, Critchley has dragged the club and fans down to his level. Simply not good enough. It does feel like, doesn't it? it I totally agree. It does feel like the crowd, the club, everything is just going like down and down and down. The, the enthusiasm is not there in the crowd to even sing anymore because, because they don't inspire you to sing. They don't get you out of your seat. You don't, there's nothing in that game. It's just like the odd, thing now and again but you get the chance and then we blow it don't we so the, the, there's a a bit of you know faffing around at the back we get it full we put a nice ball out to the wing they're coming down the wing and then the defender gets a foot in and, and puts it out for a throw in or we put a ball forward and it goes straight through to the goalkeeper or we put it out of touch or we have a shot comes to us and we, we hit one and we hit it like miles over us you know, to the left of the goal, wasn't it? Who hit that one? Somebody hit one, didn't they? Just miles, just miles off. And and then when that happens, when we miss something or we put the ball through to the goalkeeper, you kind of know then it's going to be another plodding around, passing it around, doing it slow, back to grim, sure this. So we get another bit of a move and then it all breaks down and it just, like sucks the living life out of you, doesn't it? You're sitting there thinking, we're never going to score. <laughs> it's just, it's awful. It really is awful football. It's terrible, man. It's terrible. Um, I don't know about that one. I don't know anything. We won't hear anything about what happened to the person who did the racist remark. I don't know. It's sad if somebody did. We don't need that, do we? It's the last thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we need Gareth Southgate. <laughs> like, yeah. He just he just actually like doubly ruins my life because I've got I've got like Critchley and I've got Southgate on the two teams that I actually watch because I do watch England. I haven't been watching them much because I've been working, but, you know, Southgate pisses me off as much as Critchley does at the moment. Jamie Widdop. Hi, Jamie. says, uh, Critch must have seen the reaction from the North Stand and we're, he's losing the fans. He'll get 10 games that season. At least then Sadler needs to pull the trigger. Yeah. 
Well, maybe we'll get a few games. Yes, I know. I I I, I know, Gary, but you, you predicted us a win as well. You got it wrong. Um, David Moises, the fact is without roads. Uh, oh yeah, Mr. Moley, uh, the fact is without roads uh, and he won't play in Tangerine again. We have the weakest set of forwards at the club in a very long time. Yeah, I, I'm, yeah. Let's go through the forwards then. I actually think, I think Kawasi has a lot of potential. I do. I think he brings something to the team that we haven't got. He's big. He's powerful. He is a bit of a bruiser. You know what I mean? And he's the only one I've seen this season score a goal where he's taken a few players on in the box and scored. Nobody else has done that. So I actually think he will come good. I think he'll be a good player if he wants to stay here. Beasley. I thought he played quite well with Jordan Rhodes. He can score a goal, but he can't sort of do it on his own. Lavery frustrates me. He frustrates me so much. As I say, there's a lot of running around, a load of running around, but, but when you need him to run with the ball and create something, he generally loses it. <laughs> don't me? I don't know whether there's a way you, where you like flaps around and he's running. He, I don't know. He has a terrible run and he's just so awkward. And he, he, he just, he, he was lost yesterday. And well, what, what can I say about Cole, Cole Joseph? I, Kyle Joseph. I, I, I don't know. I don't know how to judge him because he doesn't get a lot of service, but I mean, two goals, it's a pretty poor return. So it's just, it's a terrible return. But I kind of, I think he could be all right with a decent, you know. I thought I actually thought I actually wanted him to start with Joseph and uh, Kawasi yesterday. I th thought that that's what I was kind of hoping he would start with. Didn't. Right, Dalit says I think we must hold the world record for the most sideways and backwards passes every game. We must be up there. We must really be up there. Yeah, they do, don't they? They look devoid of, of confidence. Totally devoid of it. Right, they just, yeah, they, they just look broken, don't they? Blo broken by all the defeats. Probably, I would think. Is it true that Lincoln are after Gabriel? I haven't got a clue if it is or it isn't, but... Uh, I think he's our best player, so I imagine lots of clubs will be looking at him. And I also think with with Jordan Gabriel that he was magnificent with Josh Bowler down that right right wing. They played together so well, and I don't think that Critch is playing Gabriel with you know a right winger that we see the best of Jordan Gabriel. He's, he's a right back and I say, he, he was brilliant into linking with Bowler. It, it was superb. It was some of the best football I ever see. And he just doesn't have that, does he? Critch doesn't give him that. Oh, I've, I've not heard that one. I love that chance. I always reply, yes, it is, but it's our oh, shithole. Yes, it, it is. And it's not really. It's not really. People love coming here. Portsmouth versus Derby game has been stopped due to a fox running onto the pitch. Wow, it's all going on over there. Kieran Baines is here. Hello, Kieran. Come on, Blackpool. <laughs> Lee Charles on fire. Critch is terrified. Yeah, it would be great. Yeah, if I could interview him, yeah, I'd, I'd give him something. I'd give him some stick. Yes, it does look like Premier League football for Ipswich, doesn't it, next season? Could we? Could we have got him? I don't know. He came for an interview, didn't he? Something happened. We don't know. We don't know why. He would have been better than what we've got now, I think. Yeah. Oh, yes, and indeed, every free kick is blaze over the bar. We can't take set pieces. And that's another reason why, really, it's not much... There's not much point in getting loads of free kicks around the box, I suppose, because we can't take them. But I'm sure if we got lots of them, rather than just one or two, some of them might go. Some of them might actually, you know, we don't have a shot, do we? We don't hardly have a shot. There, there was a couple of times in the first half where there was a chance of a shot, and we just chose to square it and then lost it. And you think, why? Why not just have a shot? You know, the keeper might just parry it. You never know. But if, if you're not fearless and you don't have a go, you don't get anything.
That's, I don't see how step. How can Sadler step aside? The moment is that he owns the club. If there's anybody coming in who wants to buy Blackpool Football Club, I doubt it very much if they come and watch the football here. So I don't know. I think we're kind of, you know, I think uh, Simon Sadler's here to stay for now. Simon Sadler, if the penny has not dropped now, it will never. Trust me. Stop being stubborn and release Critchley. You watch Lee Ch Charles TV as you well know. Well, he might not anymore. I don't know. Since we don't put match footage anymore, I don't know. But yeah, if you're watching this, Simon, for God's sake, listen to me. You must be getting fed up of him, Simon, just like I am. You know, I was behind him. I'm behind you. But for God's sake, Simon, look at the crowd. Look at how the North Stand is. Look at how your stadium is. Look at how miserable it is. Think about season tickets next season. Are we all going to be buying them? I don't think so. I think there's going to be a lot saying no, no, no. I'm not buying them. It's all going to go downhill and it's, and it's you know, you're in charge of it. Do something. You know you need to do something. You do need to do something. Kieran Bain says, when you played uh, Norwich last season, Blackpool played amazing that day. Where has that fight gone and the passion? Well, it went with Stephen Dobby. <laughs> Stephen Dobby took over and he actually gave us a bit of fight and passion and all the fans were saying, we want Stephen Dobby. He's the man. He's done fantastic. Look at the way he's got the team playing in such a short time. He's turned it around. He nearly saved us, didn't he? He nearly bloody saved us and Simon Sadler went, no, I'll tell you what, just, I'm going to get Critchley back. He's the man. He's the only man that I can see. I can't see anybody else. Just Neil Critchley. He's the man that can do the job. And has he? Bloody well hasn't, has he? By the way, if you're new to this stream and you haven't yet subscribed, I'd love it if you did. <laughs> Just click that button. <laughs> it would be great. We need as many subscribers as we can get. Uh, Mr. Moly says, the fact is without roads, uh, oh no, we've done that one. So oh, I've gone backwards here. Uh, Mr. Molly also says, well, Critchley may be bad, but he has yet to plumb the depth of Nigel Worthington's tenure. Yes, that was that was pretty bad. And Colin Hendry as well was pretty terrifying, wasn't it? But it, it, it's it's pretty bad football. And he's had a year. He's had a year of kind of fighting to get in that top six. We've been eighth for a long time and we've been knocking at the door and he's consistently blown it, hasn't he? He's consistently blown the chances over and over and over again. And it's been so disappointing. So many times we've thought we've turned the corner. Um, it's been after the Lord's Mayor's show and it's happened time and time again. He's changed things. He's, 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 he's meddled with things and it's just gone to rat shit, hasn't it? For, uh, but I can't even think of any other word than that. He just has. We've just blown it time and time and time again. And surely Simon Sadler must see that he just can't do it. He just doesn't have, he doesn't have the bottle for me. He's not that kind of manager that, that can do things, change things, make things happen and turn, you know, a nil-nil into a one-nil or a one-nil defeat into a two-one. Yes, he does occasionally, but I mean, you know, anybody could say, yeah, we did it at Peter, but, but that's about it, isn't it? It's the only time we have. Stephen Cowell says, I feel for a change. We could have got Liam Rossini instead of Critch, but we know the lineup before he puts it out to be predictable like his tactics. Yeah, of course. I was disappointed with the lineup yesterday, uh, and I thought Coulson has, has has been one of our best players. So, why why was he dropped? He was he's been the best player for weeks. Uh, Aaron Whitfield says, "Do you think Critchley will buy Jordan from Huddersfield end of the season?" Uh, no, we don't buy anybody. Of it. No, 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 we don't. We don't shop in those shops. We shop in smaller, <laughs> lower down shops. Shops with, like I said, with players with tags on them saying, I might be good, sign me, <laughs> sign me. We don't sign anybody that's any good. Uh, Gary G says, 85 minutes of nothing happening. Only the last five, a couple of shots on target. Yeah, it was all too little too late, wasn't it? We could have got a win, but... You know, even, I was saying to Pickle, to be honest with you, if we had gone on a four-match run and we'd had got into playoffs, we'd only been up, we'd only be setting ourselves up for even more disappointment. Jake thinks less than ten games. He wants Critch out at the end of the season, as many will. I think if Simon wants to sell season tickets, I think that would do it. But he's got to find somebody 
who wants to come in and play attacking football. Darren Harvey says that uh, Rossini agreed to come, but the budget told him a big no-no. And, and that's the thing, isn't it? It's the budget at the end of the day. And that budget, Simon, since Simon Sadler said that, it, that he had to build the, the stand and he had to build the training ground and he didn't really have the budget for the squad. And I've always said, you knew before you came in, Simon, you needed to build the training ground. You had to finish that standoff and you knew you had to spend money on the squad because that's what football is all about. You haven't done. You haven't done. Look what's happening. It's the most important thing. Everything revolves around what's on the pitch and how well you're playing on the pitch. And if you get that right, everything else is easy. If you fail in that department, it's a nightmare, as you are probably finding. Oh, Semi Charm Life is here. That's how are you doing? Uh, over in America, uh, you're off work in time to catch a bit of the stream. Thanks for coming in. Uh, really appreciate it. Jake says, Joseph is okay, just needs time. What are your thoughts on Gabriel? Uh, he's one, one of my favourite players at Blackpool. And I thought he was brilliant when he linked up with, with, with Josh Bowler. And we're missing that. And we missed that when Josh Bowler came back because he was injured, you know, and Jordan Gabriel and Bowler linked really well. And I think we'd have, I think we'd have stayed up if, if Jordan Gabriel hadn't, hadn't been injured last season. David Stevens is here. If he's managing next season, the season tickets will drop so much. Just hope Sadler sees sense and gets him out of our club. Please, Simon, please. We're all begging you. Everybody here in this stream is begging you. Please <laughs> do something about this club, the manager, the players. Invest something. Just do something, Simon. For God's sake, let's have a good summer and let's have some optimism and hope. And I don't think we're going to get it if you stick with him. I don't think there's going to be optimism and hope. I don't think there is. Harry Wake is here. Hello, Harry. That's a long one. We need five to six players that are better than already at the club. No shit, Sherlock. <laughs> get short of the dead wood. Indeed. In other words, job for the boys. Get short of Critch. And he's, yeah, he's own uh, and he's, he's ganger, ga ganger on us. Hang, hanger on us. And he's hanger on us. Yeah, okay. So, so get rid of the two assistants that don't seem to do anything. And then some of the players you mentioned will shine. I think CJ has something to offer. So do I. Bring back Rob Apta. Yes, the club is a shambles. Yes, you said that in March 2023. Yes, but some of our, our slickers will stand for egg under hats. Yes, okay. So yes, yes, a lot of that is all, is all yes, is all true, Harry. It, 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 something needs to change, doesn't it? Yes, it is the central drive. But, but every everywhere you go has a shit area. But... Most of the people on holiday in Blackpool don't go anywhere near Central Drive. But yeah, it's uh, and it's all in the plans, isn't it, to rejuvenate Revo and all that sort of stuff. So there is plans. It all takes an awful long time, a bit like the Holiday Inn that they're building at uh, North Station. It's been going on for how long? I don't know, six, seven years has it been going on? <laughs> it's like, I think they started, in, I think it is about seven or eight years it's taken to do that. I, I think it's got to be the longest build of anything in the history of, it's just ridiculous how long we take to do things. Indrinan says, I have been making excuses for Critchley's way of picking teams, but when we only play Beasley up front, when Kowasi and Joseph are on the bench, baffles you, it baffles me, it baffles everybody in the stadium, it baffles everybody but Critchley and maybe Simon Sadler, who thinks he is genius. Sammy Charmoy says, I agree, you have to be brave. Take the game by the scruff of the neck. And what was the, what was the, to lose yesterday by taking the game by the scruff of the neck. What was the, there was nothing to lose. We had 60 points. We're not going down. If we'd have taken the game by the scruff of the neck and lost and give it our best go, I wouldn't be sat here today moaning like a miserable fecker on here, would I? I'd have said, well, at least we gave it a goddamn go, but we did not give it a go. And that's what I can't stand. Do I think Reading will stay up? Yeah, the, well, we could send them down. Well, they'll stay up because we won't be able to beat them on the last day of the season. Uh, right, the, the score is Portsmouth 1, Derby 2 at half time. Connor 
Ruan, is it Ruan says Critch is useless. Dobby in. Yeah, we all wanted Dobby, didn't we? Everybody was clamoring for Dobby. I would have liked Dobby to come in. I didn't see anything wrong with that, to be honest. I couldn't see anything wrong with it. The way he'd got the team playing looked pretty good to me. We looked like we were playing for him as well. You know, you have to have that manager. If you just joined the stream, I was I was saying earlier that I rewatched uh, my video, which was the 30th anniversary of Billy Air you know, getting promotion at, at Wembley of uh, the 92 team. And um, I interviewed some of the players. If you watch that, I interviewed some of the players and they're all talking about Billy Air. And they all, all the get all the players that I interviewed said the same thing that Billy Air made them feel 10 feet tall when they went out. He had that ability to make them feel like they were gods going on the pitch. And he had that ability to make them want to run through a brick wall for him. He was that inspirational, a manager. And I do not see that. I don't see these players wanting to run through a brick wall for Critchley. I, I don't see it. And I'm sure you don't either. They just look disinterested. And yeah, he just he's not an inspirational manager. And we need that. We need a Billy Air, don't we? That's I'd love it. Steve Huntley says, it will be interesting what the season ticket sales are like next season. Yeah, they'll be very... They'll be very poor. They won't be as good as this year. It's all going downhill. It's all, everything's gone downhill since Simon Sadler basically said, I don't have the money to do it all. I don't have the money to do the stand, the training ground and the team. This is what you're getting. This is what you're getting. All this hassle, Simon. Big mistake. Huge, as Julia Roberts would say. Just imagine what would happen if Rob Apter stayed the stay. The only positive from this season is that he'll be here next season, or maybe Sadler will sell him. Yeah, yeah. get him, get the likes in. Make sure what have we got at the moment? Six, seven. I, I don't know how many likes we've got. I can't, I can't see it. But yeah, like the video, subscribe to the channel, help us out, help a guy out who's putting in a lot of effort for very little reward, <laughs> who doesn't know why he keeps doing the. I don't know why I keep doing match vlogs. Jesus Christ, honestly. It's just, I don't even know what to say on half of it because I'm, a, I'm starting to feel I'm a bit like Critch. I just keep doing the same thing, saying the same thing. I, there's nothing I can say. There's nothing I can say in them. It's just so goddamn bad. Dave G says, if Bolton don't go up by the playoffs, then I'd like Sadler to bin Critchley and make a move free and ever. Yeah, no, I, I would like that. He fit the Simon Sadler criteria. He did well at Barrow and also Bolton. And he was looking around, wasn't he? I filmed him. If you saw the video, I was filming him and he was looking around and you can see he loves the place. He wanted to come. We didn't, you know, I think he had to try for an interview and I, th I think they rejected him because he didn't have enough experience, but he has now. But yeah, he, he'd be Blackpool through and through, wouldn't he? Him and Dobby as a, him with Dobby with him uh, would be great, wouldn't it? Right. Yazza, Yozza, Yozza says it'll be a hard league, a league one next season, very competitive. Yes, it's, it is. It's hard to get out of. It's hard to get out of. And if, if you want to get out of it, you got to spend money and you got to have a good manager and you got to play good football. And, and uh, we're not doing any of that. <laughs> All those three things, uh, like, you know, good manager, can't tick that box. Good players that die for the cause, can't tick that box. Um, great recruitment, can't tick that box. I don't know, I, we're just not set up for promotion. We, we're not doing the things that you have to do to get promoted. I uh, reckon Gabriel have looked very sad at full time. We'll leave looking... We'll leave looking very sad at full time. Yeah, I think he will. We've loved him, haven't we? And uh, good luck to him if, if, if he goes. Uh, he's a great player. Uh, he's been fantastic. It's just a shame of all the injuries that he's got that has kind of not let us see the best of him. But I, I think he's a great player. Too good for this team, really, at the moment. Yeah, we won't need to. We won't need to buy Jordan Rhodes, will we? Uh, he will be on a free. So. He loved it here. Maybe he could be groomed to be a manager for Blackpool. That what about Jordan Rose's manager? Oh, I quite fancy that idea. Dave G says, realistically, who would the others watching here want to? Re who would the others watching here want to replace Critchley? Let's see some names. Well, we we'll, we we'll just give you a few. Ian Everett. Ian, Ian, Ian Everett. Um, there's loads of good managers out there. 
I mean, there's eight of them above us in the league at the moment, isn't there? And some great managers. So he's not the only one. There are lots of managers. Liam Rossini, people have been saying. Um, some would probably... I'm just trying to think of who else has been mentioned recently. Uh, Richie Wellens has been mentioned, hasn't it? Richie Wellens, obviously, Stephen Dobby, obviously. So that's, that's, that's four there for you. Aaron Whitfield that says, where do you think Blackpool will finish this season? We'll finish top 10. We're not going to do any better than that. We might not even manage to stay in that the way we're going at the moment. So top, top 10, but not, nothing better than that. Gareth Gerrards. Hello, Gareth. He says, Critch has drained the atmosphere from the ground. Yes, he has. I was sat in my seat thinking I really can't be bothered coming to the remaining games, home or away, to be left totally bored, frustrated and cheated out of a big outlay for two season tickets. Yeah, I kind of feel the same. And I have to, well, don't forget, I also have to make a bloody video <laughs> when we lose. It's horrendous. Uh, we're told off... The, we're told off the pitch things are moving forward, but on the field, it's going backwards. Change and on-field ambition is required. Well, they keep saying things are happening off the field, but are they? Are they? We're still waiting, aren't we? We're still waiting. A year after my rant, a year after I was dragged into the club for saying that, you know, the um, the training ground hadn't started. You know, I, I, well, I said the training ground isn't happening. But, but it wasn't, was it? It wasn't. It's still not happening. Until it's happening, it's not happening. So wasn't fake. It was true. It's not happening. Until they start, diggers start going in, the planning permission goes through and we start on it. When that happens, it is then happening. And I'll hold my hand up and say, yeah, I now believe. But at the moment, I'm still waiting to be convinced like everybody else is. Mr. Moley says, looking from afar, as I tend to do these days, Critchley is all about technique and not about emotion. The team plays in his image, all short passing, possession stuff, very little gung-ho footy. Yeah, none, none, no gung-ho footy at all, which is what we want to see. This is not, we do not want to see football that we're seeing at the moment. We, we don't want to see it. And, and, and we've told him in no uncertain terms. <laughs> yeah, by Mbappe. Yeah, but he, Mbappe wouldn't do any good here. He wouldn't do it. You can't win a football game on your own and he wouldn't have players around him. Mardi of Sulemania. Here we go. Here we go. Look at this. Mardi. Hello, Mardi. Blackpool get battered everywhere they go. No, we don't. We don't. <laughs> we haven't got battered everywhere we go this season at all. We're on 61, uh, 61 points, you know, so so it's false. Matt says, hi, Lee. Mardi is a PE &E fan. Oh, well. I don't, I, I don't think any, any of you, 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 you can be bothered, to be honest. Especially after your loss yesterday against Birmingham and you're stuck again. You're going to be stuck in bloody championship again with a few more million in debt next season. Fantastic. 59 in the stream and only five likes. What's going on out there? 59, well, there's 68 in the stream, according to me. Five likes, come on, like the screen, stream YouTube, like that sort of stuff. Help me out if you're watching. Give it a like. Push, boot that like button down there. Help me out. Hey, Marty, try humour. <laughs> yeah. you know, do they have that in Nobberville? Do they have humour? I don't think they do. Uh, Blackpool Council has bought the East Stand. Have they? I don't think they have. They're buying out the houses. Uh, well, they're repossessing them, aren't they? But I don't think they're actually buying the East Stand. Are they going to sponsor it, maybe? I don't know. But I think I think the club have to buy. I think I think the club have got the money uh, in place to buy it. Yeah, well, that that now that is a problem, isn't it? He's signing him on a he's signing him on a massive long blooming contract, honey. So can he afford to sack him? That's the thing, and it can. Can Critchley afford to, can Saddle afford to get rid of him? It will cost too much. But he's got rid of a few. He needs him to just like, you know, resign. <laughs> Maybe if we all shout loud enough, he'll resign. Yeah, no, they weren't. They weren't, Matt. The, uh, I thought yesterday the fans were not as loud. I've got to give credit for the away fans. They were pretty loud. Uh, they weren't really pretty loud. Pretty loud. 
There's 200 of them or something, weren't there? I think they did well for 200, but they weren't very loud. But yesterday, no, we were, we were terrible because because the football doesn't inspire you. To, it doesn't inspire you, does it? We've had basically the shit kicked out of us as fans for for two seasons and, and we're just not the Blackpool fans that we need to be. We need to be that loud, unified, noisy group of fans, don't we, that, that, that we're not. Stephen Roberts says, in the story of the season, we all see it, crap lineups and silly results and crap team. Uh, uh, probably at crap teams, you mean, yeah. I mean, we, we really have. I mean, Bert, Bert and Albion was probably my lowest, was probably my lowest thing. Wigan was bad, but I actually kind of feared Wigan a bit because I thought, they, you know, because they were in a false position, weren't they? They've done really well to get out of where they are with a big points deduction. So they've done really well. So I feared them. But Bert and Albion, I didn't fear them at one bit and they looked absolute bloody garbage. They had, they played for 10 minutes, got a raggy goal and then just hang on, hung on. They did every sort of delaying tactic they could think of. And Blackpool just played totally into the hands. We just never even really tried to, to get a goal back. And that was so disappointing. And it did ruin my boxing day. Yes. Gabriel is, is certainly is, um, too good for league one. I agree. Harry Wake says, uh, Colby Bishop, big mistake, not signing him. He might have kept us up. He said, we find ourselves going back five seasons. Yeah, why? I don't think we want to sign him, Harry. I think that's the thing. I think it's just any excuse. We don't actually want to spend any money on players, really. I think that's what it is. All these bids we put in, we never get them, do we? It's always never enough, never quite buys them out of, you know, the contract or whatever. They never sign for us. So I don't think we really have the desire to sign these players. I don't think we really want it enough. I don't think we want to risk it enough. I know it's all right. It's dead easy for us to say, oh, you know, spend a million pounds on a player. It's not our million pounds, but really, if you've taken over a football club, you have to be prepared to spend some money. You know, you have to be. No, but it's, that's football, I'm afraid to say. And if you're not prepared to spend any money, then don't bloody buy in. You know what I mean? Don't, don't, don't bother. Stay in wherever you are and have your edge fund and have an easy life. Why put yourself through all this shit if you're not prepared to do the things that you need to do? I know you're going to do a training ground. I know you're going to do a stand, but Jesus, we're like five years in and, and nothing started yet. You know what I mean? And we've gone, we're actually backwards now, aren't we? I'd, I'd say we're worse now than we were actually at the start of all this. It's worse football than it was when we, you know, when we came back on homecoming day. It was better foot. The homecoming day match was better football than this, wasn't it? It was 100% better than this. It's absolutely bloody awful. My life, my journey says progress should now officially come off the club's badge replaced with regression. Yeah, indeed. We are regressing. I agree with you. Uh, I, I don't have a lot of hope for next season. If I'm really being, being honest, I don't. If we carry on, I mean, we're losing loads of, you know, are oh, they good players, but we're, we're losing some good players. And we're going to be losing Gabriel. We're going to be losing Ek Pateta, obviously. And um, are we going to replace them with anything decent? You know, we can't sign, you know, like that low, we put a bid in for him. We didn't get him, did we? We could have really done with him. I, I looked at him yesterday. I thought, bloody hell, he, he is the kind of centre off we could have done with. Huge. You know, a bit like when Ian Evert came, just a huge guy, isn't he? We needed something like him. David Stevens says, you do it because you have so much passion and love your club like we all do. Unfortunately, we've got this clueless clown. Yeah, well, that's it. I have got passion, but I, I, I don't want to help. I, I, all I've ever done with this channel is really tried to help, or what I want to do is help to get people enthusiastic about, about coming back to watch Blackpool, which is why I did all the pitch videos and the bird flying around the hawk you know and all that sort of stuff that i did and went to the uh, the kit launch at the top of the tower and did that you know all these things i was doing was trying to get people back interested in blackpool football club i wanted thousands coming back and i did my best but i i feel sometimes when i make these videos i'm actually torturing you guys to watch them but if i can just ask you one favor even if you don't want to watch the match day video just put it on your phone and leave it playing don't even watch it if you don't want to but at least give me the views on the video even if you don't want to watch it just leave it playing and let it play all the way through and just turn the sound off you don't have to watch it if you don't want to watch it i mean i mean it's it's a decent video but it needs people to watch it and when it's nil nil it's really hard to get views so that kind of 
it, with the YouTube algorithm, it kind of makes things worse if people don't watch it. So at least just, just turn it on, turn your sound off, go and make some tea or a brew or something and, and just, and, and just let it play out and help me out if you can do that. Cause I need more views on these videos. It's, 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 uh, it's pretty hard. And Neil Warnock is the answer to everybody. You know, I mean, I wish we'd have gotten Colin Wanker rather than bloody Mick, Mick McCarthy and his bloody boring put. You know, I wish we'd have got Warnock like Huddersfield did because he, he saved him. He did save him, didn't he? Yeah, but yeah, the trouble is, yeah, I wouldn't mind him coming in either, but the trouble is he's going to be up in the championship. He ain't going to want to come here. Well, that's the thing, isn't it? The problem is who would want to take the job on restricted resources? Yeah, who would? You've got to have ambition, haven't you? E even, even to kind of, you know, encourage a manager to come in and, and take over. He, he's got to be excited of, you know, he, there's got to be something you can tell him, I'm going, you know, whatever it is to get him to come in and do something. And he's, he's got to know that the board are behind him and they're going to get him players and they're going to turn it all around. And that's probably why we'll just keep Critch because how are they going to talk anybody else into being a manager here? <laughs> Sadler should consider his opinion, his position as well. Should the right consortium come along and the right offer is made, I'm sure he would consider selling the club. I'm, I'm, I'm sure he would, but I think that's Dream Street at the moment, Michael. I don't think any consortiums are looking to buy into this club. Oh, okay. 22 likes. That's good. Likes are going up. That's what we like to see. Thank you very much. It does help the video get out to more people if, if people like it. Stephen Roberts said, did you hear Brett Ormond on Radio Lancashire? He proper fell for April Fools. He thought we actually signed Medine again. No, I, I didn't. I didn't. Okay, 27 likes. Thank you very much. That's what, that's what we want. Can we get 50? Can we get to 50? There's 72 people in the stream, so we should be able to get to 72 if you all just press that like button quickly if you're enjoying it. Uh, Gareth Gerrard said, Charlie Adam, despite his inexperience as a manager, did something Critch never does. He called his players out on the radio and that he will not tolerate players not running themselves into the ground for their team. That's what we would like to hear from our manager. Uh, uh, how, how we could do with a manager who is honest in his post-match interview. Yeah, I, I wouldn't mind Charlie Adam as well. So there we are. That's another manager suggested. Charlie Adam coming back. Purchase order for the houses on Back Henry Street. Yes, I, I, I do believe they are buying out the houses. Um, but it'll be all part of the government redevelopment, blah, blah, blah. We want the council won't actually paying for it. We'll be getting subsidised from somewhere, won't we? I don't understand how politics work, but I don't ever trust any of them. Uh, Connor Ruane says, I don't understand why the fans aren't chanting we want Critchley out. It's the only way Sadler will take a hint. Well, I think it's going to get... well. I think we've already discussed this earlier. If uh, we lose to Fleetwood, um, then I think there will be a lot of a lot of noise wanting Sadler. So Chris has got to win that game. He's got to win that game, and I can see us losing it. I can. Pathfinder says I would at least give Critchley till next season. Cannot see Simon Sadler sacking him in the short term. Is that you're giving him till the end of till next season because you can't see Simon Sadler sacking him, or do you actually want to give him till next season? Let me know, Pathfinder. What 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 you mean by that? Do you mean that you are quite happy yourself to give Critchley till next season, or are you just saying you're gonna have to give it him till next season because you can't see Simon Sadler sacking him? Just let me know if you're happy with Critch, because there's not many that are. Uh, Nigel Perrot said, I was going to Reading, but Critchley makes it a pointless exercise. Indeed. Indeed, he does. The, the, it, it is all pointless now. Connor Ruan says, uh, Cheltenham was the turning point for me. Fucking shocking front. Why put... What? Cheltenham was the... Doesn't make any sense. Cheltenham was the turning point for me. I think you mean it was a shocking performance and you were critch out then. And I'll take that as what, as what you mean there. That kind of makes sense to me. Yes, indeed. Port Vale away it was the nadir of the campaign so far. Yes. Well, those two games, weren't they? Those, those two bloody games, Burton Albion away and Port Vale away. Really, we should have all, I should have known. I should, I, my, my hope should have gone then. 
I should have seen that. I thought there is no way this Muppet is going to turn this around because you just, if you, if you can't beat Port Vale, Burton Albion, that are both right, you know, at the bottom of the league, there for the kicking, weren't they? They were there for the kicking. In fact, Port Vale had some kids on, didn't they? <laughs> That's some kids on. They were that desperate for players. Burton Albion hadn't won a game in about 11 games. As well. They hadn't won since October or something. And we lost those two games. That, that was terrible. Yeah, we have to reinforce. We do semi charm live. Well, this is another thing, isn't it? If he can't afford to do it on his own, he should do what the Oysters did. You know, the Oysters were very clever, weren't they? On that, they brought Valeri Belacon in, and uh, yeah, they stuffed him, and it stuffed them. It was the biggest mistake they made. But 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 if they'd have, if they hadn't have done what they did to Valeri Belacon, and they'd have shared it all with him, and they'd have let him carry on investing, I, I think. They could have sold the club and walked away with all the million. You know, that's 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 what I never understood about them. The club was worth ninety six million pounds at that time, so they could have just sold it. You know, it was a guaranteed, wasn't it? It was a, at the end of the Premier League. They were guaranteed to get forty six million. So anybody who bought in for forty six million would have been guaranteed forty six million back. They could have just walked away, couldn't they, with all the money? And everybody had said, "Well done, well done, yeah, well done, got us in the Premier League." Every credit to you, you've sold the club. Good on you, but oh, they chose to do the completely wrong thing. Gareth Gerrard said, Charlie Adam at least called his team out after their defeat at Oxford. He may be inexperienced, but he's bloody honest, and I wish we could have his passion and honesty in our dugout. I'm thinking Charlie Adam is really one that we should, should be looking at, and if Fleet would go down, I think we could get him. You know, if Fleet would get relegated, I think he'd come. To, to manage in League One, I think he'd love to come and watch, come, come and manage Blackpool. And I think the fans would love him, especially if he had Dobby in as his number two. And Steve Thompson and his, uh, Dobby and Thompson and Charlie Adam, that'd be good, wouldn't it? And ANA says, in my opinion, we should go for young, hungry players from League Two and the National League in the summer. Can Sadler afford to get rid of Critch if he's on a four or five year contract? We're all hoping that Critch resigns. Just resign and go. You're not wanted here anymore. Yeah, we don't want low. I'm not talking about Ryan Law. I'm talking about the low from Wickham, if that's what you're referring to. We'll need to buy Josh Bowler. We couldn't afford his wages. That's the problem. Couldn't afford his wages, could we? No chance. Mr. Moley says, are we saying that Simon Sadler is full of empty promises or does he deserve more time to succeed? Are we as a fan base starting to lose faith in the Simon Sadler revolution? Well, we have lost quite a lot of faith in the Simon Sadler revolution because we stopped singing all the songs, haven't we? There was a time when we used to sing, you know, we've got Simon Sadler, he knows what we're after, we're going up. Don't sing that anymore, do we? Don't get that anymore, does he? He's Simon Sadler, he's one of our own. Think how much we loved him at the start. We don't now, do we? We don't now. We really don't now, Simon. You've really, you've really cocked it up, pal. Uh, yes, I think, uh, no, Jane's not here to make lunch, but yeah, cheese and pickle, right. Uh, Highly, Connor Rowan says, Highly, do you know why Ramos has stopped uploading? Have you seen him around? I haven't. Well, there's a couple of reasons why Ramos has stopped uploading. One of the reasons is that um, George, who is it, it's Ramos, he, he wants to, he has the ambition to be in sort of the media. That's, that's what he's doing. His media studies at university and he wants to be in the media. I, on the other hand, do not. <laughs> I am just, I'm just here for, to try and entertain, really. I'm not bothered about the media or anything. I don't want to be on, you know, Sky Sports or anything. But that's, that's George's ambition and that's great. And he's taken a media job, I do believe, at Fleetwood or he's working with the media team there. So he hasn't got the time to do his vlogs and this. And of course, they, uh, you know, the club told him at the start of the season that the EFL will close down YouTube channels that show match footage, which we all know is total and utter bollocks because loads of them show match footage and the EFL don't do anything about it. Because it doesn't. I was watching. Um, 
I was watching Messi and um, there's a crowd scene where all the crowd uh, are taking they've every single, there must be like a thousand of them and every single one of them in the crowd has, has got the phone up and they're filming Lionel Messi. Yeah, he's the most iconic player in the world, isn't he? If anybody, you would say, you know, you're not allowed to film him, you're not allowed to film him, it would be Lionel Messi, wouldn't it? But all the crowd are filming him because in America, they know that all that is social media, all that is building a buzz, all that is building a hype, all those people making videos, taking photographs, it all helps. In this country, we're a bunch of wankers. We are, we're a, we are a fucking bunch of wankers, a lot of them. If they don't see the benefit of, you know, fans trying to get fans in to watch, you know, enthusiastic about football and it's all free advertising, then they're just a bunch of wankers. And, and that's why, and I have stopped again. My stream has stopped. Okay, I'm back. I just need to uh, change that screen behind me because I could see myself in the screen. It was doing my head in. Um, he does still support Blackpool, but but he's got a job, and sometimes you know, lots of footballers, so you know, uh, uh, you know, maybe Liverpool fans, and they end up playing for Manchester United. You know, it's a job. It's a job, and he he's got to follow his job. Pathfinder says, right, okay, I think this is a better explanation. I would stick with the status quo at least until the first half of next season. He's on a four-year contract, so it would be a financial gam gamble to pay him off now. Can Blackpool afford to pay him off? Uh, I don't know. I don't know whether we can or we can't. Um, it's just, can they afford not to pay him off? Because if he does stay, and the way it's going at the moment, the season tickets are going to be so down. They really are going to be thousands lost. Can they afford to lose all that revenue and keep him? That's 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 the other question. Michael A said, I'm beginning to think that Saturday is car with a wig on Lee. What are your thoughts? Um, no, I don't I, I don't see him like Carl at all, to be honest. Uh Carl um Carl wouldn't spend a penny on anything. Just wouldn't spend a would he? He he was he, he did everything he could to not spend money. Simon Sadler does, you know, is spending money and you can see it. You know, you can see the things he's done. And if you, if you can't see the things he's doing, then you are, you are blind. I mean, you think about the pitch under the Oysens, you know, you think about now these Moretti lounges and the Heineken lounge. You think about how he's, you know, he's tackling the rust as, as best he can, which is all a legacy from the Oysters, isn't it? Through getting the cheapest metal you could build a stadium with, which is a disgrace. There was, there was, there was like bricks out. There was all that bashed in underneath, you know, where all the coaches, whatever, come underneath all the all the stuff on the roof there was bashed in. There was rust everywhere, wasn't there? You know, a, a lot of rust. E e even the flagpoles were just knackered. I mean, the whole place was just like going to rack and ruin. So I don't see any connection between Simon Sadler and Carl. And Simon Sadler is very shy and stays away from media. Carl Oyston was just a bumping weight schnunk, as my dad would call him. He was, he was just bumping weight. Uh, but but uh, Carl I had had a better you know had a sense of humour. Um, Simon Sadler to me is just he's just too guarded and too secret, and that brings out he's not open enough for me. But no, I, I don't see um, I don't see him anything like Carl. I'm afraid I, I can't see any any similarity whatsoever. Uh, Gareth Jones said, I had a chat with Steve Thompson in the Elk about 18 months ago and he said, you always need a plan B. Sadly, our manager only has a plan A. Yeah. I said this on the other stream, you know, if you were managing a, an under 12s team, you would probably have to teach them two ways of playing. You know, you'd have two ways of playing. It would be, um, you know, we're going to play this routine. So we'll practice this one. And then if that doesn't work, we'll change it to a four, four, two, whatever. We don't seem to have, it's as if we don't train for any other system that we might just be able to change in the game. Cause we never do. We never have any other system, do we? Until we throw it at the end, but it's too late. Desperation plan is our, is our plan B, isn't it? Planning desperation. 
Stephen Roberts says, yes. As you say, I'm typing Adams, Dobbs and Thompson. If that's not a tangerine dream, what is? Indeed. Catherine, wait. Is that still Harry? I think it probably is. Dennis Bergkamp was looking for a Division One club to buy with some of his pals. Can you get... Can you get to know anything, Lee? Oh, if only I was in the no. If only I was in any sort of no. I'm not in any no. I'm just like everybody else. I'm just a fan. I know absolutely sweet Fanny Adams about what's going on. I, I don't know anything, honestly, other than what I see and what I say. It'd be great to be in the know. I hope those likes are going up on the stream as well, because there's still 62 of you in here. We've got lots of comments to get through. God, I'm going to be here all night. Uh, I think the season in 2021 when we won the playoffs was with Critch was a fluke. Uh, probably a lot of it could have been down to the lockdown and the fact there was no fans in the ground. Maybe that, that, maybe. I sometimes think, you know, because he was like an under 20, 23 coach, he was used to playing football with no fans. You know, just training games all the time, innit? And when lockdown came and there was no fans in, it, it was pretty much just like taking the under-23s, wasn't it? There was no crowd, no fans. And maybe that did work in his favour. But having said that, his first season in the championship was bloody brilliant. He did amazing. It all fell apart at the end as he bottled it. But uh, And really, not particularly that he bottled it. It was because we lost Gabriel and we lost... Um, the lad from Chelsea, what was he called? You remind me in the thing. Uh, Dujon Sterling. So we lost Sterling and Gabriel, didn't we? Right as we were getting near to the playoffs. And they that that screwed us up, I think. Losing both those players injured uh, really cops us up. Um, Aaron Whitfield said, so what was your best away game for this season? I've not been too many. I've not been too many this season. We just couldn't afford to do it this season. No sponsors on the channel. Didn't really see the point in spending all the thousands and thousands we have been doing for people not to watch these videos. So it was a thing I just had to do. You know, we decided it was just too much, but I quite enjoyed Exeter away, which was didn't particularly enjoy the game, but I enjoyed going to Exeter, going to Cheddar Gorge. I've got that football tourist guy to do, but I've just not I'd had the enthusiasm to do it. Blackpool Boy says, if we don't win against Fleetwood, everything is going to start, start going down even more than it is now. I, I honestly think, Blackpool Boys, if we don't win against the Cods, it is going to be murder in Bloomfield Road. If they beat us, I swear to God, Critch is going to, a lot of them, sadly, all of them, they'll get abuse like you won't believe. Because if we don't beat Fleetwood, honestly, I can't even imagine how bad it, it's going to be. I can't imagine for one minute how, how toxic it's going to be in that ground. We cannot lose to Fleetwood. We cannot. We, we just can't do it. It'll be a disaster. Yes, I did freeze, but it's uh, I've got it back. I figured out how to get it back. Um, the problem I have is to get this stream to look quality and not terrible. I've got to, I've got to do the stream from the back computer and control it from this computer. And it just, it just isn't perfect, but it's better than it was. The quality is decent. It was terrible before just using this MacBook. It just, just doesn't have the power to give you this good quality on screen. So we've got, we, we, we've got to live with it. So it's a little, I have to go to the back computer and sort it out so if it is i i, I will um, sort it out don't worry you just have to bear with me um there's not a cat in hell's chance critchley would do the honorable thing and resign he's happy on the windfall for failure gravy train and we'll be looking for his next big payday like apple Dunn does yeah well they soon they soon get to know how to do all that don't they it's a great job isn't it just get sacked and get paid a fortune yeah it's, an, it's, it's a good life being a being a, a football manager i think it's great um, Mandan Goose says, Neil Critchley is worrying me. He's worrying all of us, man. He's worrying all of us. The football's bloody awful. It couldn't be much worse. In fact, honestly, I know nothing about managing a team. I know nothing about football, but I'm bloody convinced. I'm bloody convinced I could do as good a job. I could lose as many. I think anybody in the crowd could have took that team yesterday and made them play better than that. It was just so poor. In fact, who in this stream would have gone with that starting 11? Let me know. What would you have started with? Put it in the comments because I wouldn't have started with that 11. No, not in a million years. There probably is um, terms and conditions in his contract. 
I would hope so. I would hope there's a way to get him out if he if he doesn't get us in the top six. I hope that was a that was in his contract. You know, you can get sacked if we're not in the top six. I, I would hope so. Uh, Steve Huntley says it's going to be uncomfortable for Critchley if the North start chanting for Charlie Adam. Well, we you know we chanted for Ian Everett, didn't we? And if he's beating us, we will. Uh, Mandan Goose says the manager might not be the best fit right now, but the owner certainly isn't. Anybody calling for the owner's head already has forgot how bad it was under the Oysters. Indeed, indeed. You can't compare Simon Sodler to the Oysters. It's just not even, it was so bad. It was ridiculous. I mean, Simon Sadler, I, I, I do feel has the club's best interest in heart. I just don't think he has the money. You know, sorry, I'm just going to take a little drink because my throat's getting dry. Yeah, I don't think he has the money. I think he's got money, but I don't think he has that, you know, the billionaire. I know he manages a billion dollar hedge fund, but I don't think he's a billionaire himself. And uh, I just don't think he has the money to do what he needs to do. He's going to do the training ground. He's going to do the stand. Let's hope he does those two things and then does those and then maybe tries to get a buyer for it. Those things have got to be done. They've got to be done. They just have to be. That they're, they're, they're holding us back. Gath Chera says, Lee, you do a terrific job acting as a voice for us Blackpool fans. Yeah, a voice that they never invite, do they? They never invite me to any of these. Not, not that I think I would like to go to one of these meetings, but there's more, there's more people subscribed to this channel than any of the supporters groups, any of the minority groups that are invited to these meetings, but they wouldn't dare invite, they wouldn't dare invite me to the meeting, would they? Well, they don't, do they? They don't say, yeah, Lee Charles, you want to come down and, uh, and then, uh, Listening on the meeting, I'll tell you what, tell all your thousands of subscribers what, what you've heard and come back and spread the message, you know, like John the Baptist or something. Yeah, I think you think how many how many members are there of BST? How many members are are, are, are there of the muckers? You know? How many how many Asian fans are there? And yeah, how many subscribers are to this channel? that I can talk to. I can just immediately talk to. I can film it, for God's sake. Gonna I'm terrified of me. They wouldn't dare. They wouldn't dare have me go in one of, one of those meetings. But they should do, and they should, you know, they should, I should be a positive voice for them, shouldn't I? Really? You know, they should use me for my, po for my positivity. And they haven't got, they haven't got the brains to use me. Steve Amer says, Charlie Adam and Stevie, Stephen Dobby in charge would get proper attacking football back at Bluefield Road. We can dream. Oh, wouldn't that be great? Wouldn't you just love to see that? They all know. How, they know, don't they? Stephen Dobby, Charlie Adam and Steve Thompson all know what Holloway did. They all know how he played. They all know that system. They all know what created that excitement, that, you know... I think, I, I think I've said already the last game we went to with my dad when he was um, like courtesy of the hospice in, in, in the box and we were playing, uh, I think we were, I think it was, I think it was actually Millwall. Was it Millwall? It might've been, it might not have been Millwall, but, but anyway, but half time we'd had about 20, we'd had about 20 chances at half time. I remember that there was actually a knob ender in, in the box and he was saying, bloody hell, I said, no wonder it's, it's rocking here. I've never seen football like this in my life. And that was from a knob ender. We actually drew it one all in the end, the equalised, but, but we were superb. It was just, you came out buzzing, even though they got an equalised at the end because it was so good. We don't do any, any, anything of that now. We, don't, we, we just don't play football like that anymore. And it's, that's what we want to see. Michael A said, yes, he's done that to the stadium and the pitch, but total lack of investment. Well, yeah, I know. I know, but he's, he's, he was quite honest about it, wasn't he? He was quite honest about it. He basically said, I've got to do a, a, a training ground that's gone from, what did he say? It was originally 11 million pounds and the building costs had gone up and up and up and it was now 23 million. And, and, and there's, the stand is also doubled in price as well. And he was basically saying that I don't have the money to do all this and do the playing squad and improve the playing squad. And that's what he said. He was open about it. And I do believe him, but the problem is, and I've said it all along that he had to have, when he came into this club, he knew, 
he had to buy a training. He knew he had to develop a training ground because it's been going on. If he's a Blackpool fan, that's been going on for about 20 odd years, hasn't it? The embarrassment of Squires Gate. He's improved that. He has improved that. He's done a lot down there. It's a lot different to how it was. He spent a lot of money on it, but he knows he's got to get a proper academy training, you know, with loads of different pitches and all different games being played on different levels. And the academies are all playing there to get this status. So he knows he's got to do that. And he knew, he knew full well before he came in that he had to build that East Stand because it's only got a limited shelf life. It's only got a safety certificate for so long. It had to be done. So he knew he had to do those things, but he also knew when he bought into a football club that he had to look after the football side of things as priority number one. And that is the problem. And that is what I've said all along. That has been his Achilles heel and it's what's killing him and it's what's ruining it for him. And to be honest with you, I just don't think he has the money to do it. I don't think he has. And he's probably taken on more than he can chew. And it's a shame but there was such a lot needed doing. He got the club for a song, didn't he? Really, it was going cheap, you know, sold through the receivers. So he got it for a pretty, you know, for a cheap penny. But there was a lot of money needed, needed bloody spending, which is looking like about 60 million quid just to get a training ground right and the stand right. So it's a lot of money. And I, I just, I honestly, I, I don't think, uh, I don't blame him for it. I, I don't have anything against it. I just do not think that Simon Sadler has got the funds to do everything. And I wish he hadn't have bought in if he, if he didn't, you know, does that make sense? That's what I'm saying. He knew he had to do all that. So if you knew he had to do all that before you come in, why the hell did you come in if you didn't have the money? Or if you haven't got the money, as we've already said in this stream, get somebody in to help you. Get, you know, a, a minority shareholder like Val Valerie Bellicon who can pump some money in and keep, and, you know, I mean, the Oysters would never spend on the squad, would they? Ever. All the, you know, our, the transfer windows under the Oysters were horrendous until Bellacon came in. And once Bellacon came in, he started spending money and investing in the squad. And the minute he started doing that, he, he lit a touch paper that took us into the Premier League. And that's what Blackpool needs. That's what we need. Because if you get a team and you bring some players in that excite the fans, the fans turn into this bloody noisy, unbelievable, loud cr crowd that roar them on and make a noise of like 50,000 people. And, and this crowd can take you all away, but you've got to have the product on the pitch to ignite that fan base to do that and do what Valerie Bellicon did. We all talk about Holloway and what he did, but it was Valerie Bellicon that brought in Charlie Adam. It was Valerie Bellicon that, you know, that, that, that brought David Vaughan in. It was Valerie Bellicon that got DJ Campbell. The Oysters would never spend a freaking penny, would they, ever? It was all down to Valerie Bellicon. And if Simon Sadler is like the Oysters, he can't afford to be bringing in players, then he should be finding himself a Valerie Bellicon. He has to. It's like the bleeding obvious, really, isn't it? Semi Charm Lie says you're going to smash Fleetwood. Well, we bloody well hope so. Reese Morrissey is here. Hello, Reese. Yesterday was woeful. Literally, was that bad? I was falling asleep watching it. I'm still hopeful of the playoffs, but after yesterday, forget it. <laughs> forget it. Just forget. Don't put yourself through any more torture, Reese. We're not going to get in the playoffs. Lincoln are on fire. We're not on fire. We need a bloody miracle, and I can't see a, a, a miracle happen, happening. It's, it's, it's very unlikely. It looks so unlikely. It really is. It's like, yeah, it's, it's not going to happen. Uh, there might be a pitch invasion if we don't beat Fleetwood. Well, I hope there's not. I hope there's not because we can't afford that. So, but uh, protest, uh, protest all you like. If, if you know, give it some stick to the people stick it to the man if you're on if we get beat by fleetwood you have my permission lee charles tv permission to stick it to the man michael hay thinks the cods will beat as well yeah you can think that way i think we'll beat them i hope we beat them i hope we do everything to make sure that we beat them i might even do a rallying call video <laughs> addressed purely to the players to not lose this game can't do it. I'll be there. I can't do a Fleetwood watch along. 
Yeah, they were great times. Uh, yeah, they were great. And if they ever allow, um, if, if, if the thing happens where um, you can watch, you know, the live games away from home, um, I may do our lives away from home. You know, you know, if, 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 if we legally can watch them in the UK, I can do the live streams. Um, and, and I may well do. I, I, I used to love it and I actually, I actually miss those. I'm going to be doing a lot more live uh, streams. And I, I may start just doing some live stream watch alongs, watching bloody Premier League stuff, just just to kind of just get away from the misery. Certainly, there's a Euros coming up. I'll, I'll, I'll be doing some for that whenever I can. But I'm also working as well, so I can't. Uh, Mandan Goose says, "I'd honestly rather not hit the playoffs this year. I'd hate to tarnish our record with a team that isn't ready for it." Yeah, me too. I think it's sparing us, isn't it? Reese Morris, he says, uh, Dembele for CJ and Bias for Virtue and would have gone 4-4-2. Three at the back doesn't work and it's proved so many times. Yeah, thank you for answering that question. I would have actually gone with, uh, I would have started with um, Kouassi and Kyle Joseph. I would have started with that front too. I wouldn't have started with Lavery. I think Lavery is okay to bring on late on in a game. He's the one to bring on with, you know, 25 minutes to go to run at a tiring defence. I think he's quite useful then, but I think when you put Lavery up against those six foot four bloody defenders, I think you just, you're just literally pissing in the wind. Yes, indeed. Lee Charles TV Lee and Charles Fan TV Supporters Club. Indeed. Biggest one, isn't it? Nobody bigger than us. We are the biggest. And I can get it out. I can get the message out to thousands, can't I? I said that right at the start when Simon Sadler came and I wanted to actually record the initial um, meeting that, that I went to that they weren't going to allow me to go to go into. But that's a different story. But, but yeah, I wanted to live stream it out. At that time, I could have live streamed it out. And rather than what they had at that meeting, and I'll tell you what they had at that meeting. Simon Sadler comes to the club, does this meeting. And um, you knew what he was going to say, didn't you? Everybody knew what Simon Sadler was going to say. He was going to say, I've come into the club, you know, and I'm going to, I've got ambition. I'm going to do my best to, you know, look at, you know, look after this club. And I'm going to, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to make sure that you're never in any financial trouble. And I'm going to do my best to have a plan to get us up and all that sort of stuff. He's, he's going to, he's not going to say anything controversial, is he? And yet they were, oh, no, you can't film it. And I'm thinking, well, he's not going to say anything controversial, but. We had a, there was a meeting with, I don't know, 150 invited people. And I would say out of those 150 people, there was only one person who wasn't there for a drink. And that was me because I don't drink. So I don't, I don't drink alcohol. So I wasn't there for a free piss up. Everybody else was there for the free bar. Everybody was there for the free bar. And none of them would be telling everybody what was said because they're just, I could have sold thousands. And I said that at the time, you could have had it live streamed out. The whole bloody Blackpool would have seen it. It would have like boosted my channel up, would have just done wonders for everything. And they just, they, they don't get it. They don't get it. They just don't get it. Yes, exactly. Can't have me coming in and speaking our truth and rocking the boat. Exactly. No, but we can still, we don't have to go in, do we? We can do it here. You know? Rock the boat. Catherine Wake says, you said earlier that Sadler needs to get it right on the pitch, not throw the odd tin of paint around, but a 20 foot container on Squires Gate and put some gym equipment in. Yeah, no, that's not what I'm saying, uh, Harry. What I'm saying is, yes, he needs to get it right on the pitch. He needs to paint things. He needs to get the pitch right. He needs to spend money on the training ground. He needs to build a new training ground and he needs to build a new stand. He has to do all of it. Not, not, Two things and not one. He has to do all those three things. Three things. Build a training ground. Build a stand. Build a team. That's it. If you've got to paint, you've got to paint. That's all that's got to be done. The upkeep of any stadium in the country is fortunes. Football grounds are fortunes to upkeep. Everybody knows that. Simon Sadler knows that. You've got to have the money when you come in. If you say, right, I'm going to buy Blackpool Football Club. What do I need to do? What's the deal? So, right, so I, I've got to build a training ground. 
I've got to build a new stand and I've got to have a team fit enough to get promoted into the championship and maybe a team fit enough to get in the Premier League. That is that is my job. I have those three things to do. And if I, if I have to do one and two, but I can't do three, don't take, don't be an owner. That's it. Don't be an owner. Don't own it. If you cannot afford to do the three most important things, don't come on saying, oh, it's a lot of money to do the training round. It's a lot of money then, you know, to do the stand. So I haven't quite got the funds to do the team. Wrong. Fucking wrong. Absolutely wrong. You've got to do it all. All of it. Gareth Jarrett said the difference with Dobbs, Adam, Everton, and Tomo is they're forever linked to our finest hour and they uh, never done the dirty arms by walking away. They are loved and get blackpool because they've experienced the fruits of believing the impossible indeed. Indeed, they did. And they would get Blackpool, wouldn't they? They wouldn't want to be playing this football. Uh, there's no way if Dobby, Dobby Adam, Everton, and Tomo were here as a foursome that they would servers this shit that we're watching and it is absolute bloody shit dembele to leeds well good luck on that good luck on that leeds dave g says love the churchillian speaks lee very emotional very motivational pal yeah indeed indeed yeah hated by the club it's a lot of sense Michael Haig says, our main problem is sadly is not prepared to spend money on good players. This is a big, well, again, I keep saying it. It's like you're saying it. He's not prepared to spend money. I don't think he has the money, Mike. It's not a case of not being prepared. It's like, I'm not prepared to buy a blooming Ferrari. I'd love one. I'd love a Ferrari. I'd love to be able to afford a Ferrari. But I can't afford a Ferrari. And I don't think Simon Sadler can afford to do all the things that he needs to do. He can't afford, he's actually said it publicly, that I can't basically afford to do this training ground and the stand and have the money available for the squad. And that is a big mistake. And if he keeps throwing money away, you know, if, if, if he has taken Critchler on a four year contract, you can't afford to sack him, can he? Really? You can't afford it. It's, you know, it's, money doesn't grow on trees and you'll only have so much, you know, you'll only have so much. Mandan Goose says, you need a team poll, poll, nearly 8,000 subs is about 75% of the match day attendance. Let, let, let the fans pick the team. <laughs> I don't want to listen, you know, the Mucker, you know, the Mucker supporters group went in, didn't they? And they went to talk to the players and everything. I wouldn't want to do that. That's that, that's not me. It's not what I'm about, but I, I, I would love to help. I would love to help if I could, you know, if, if I would love to help. And, uh, I did do a lot of helping with the interim board. They were right behind me. They wanted me to help and they let me help. And I did, I went in, I filmed the, the pitch being done and what was happening on the pitch and all the corrowing and all that sort of stuff. And I, I went down and I did little, little shots with a little thing on wheels to get the tractors looking gray. I filmed that bloody big hawk coming out to kill all the bloody birds and I did all that out, out of love because I wanted to promote it. And then they got me, they got me, you know, they got me, but to these people don't get me, you know, they don't get me. Connor Rowan says, I just wish one of the Blackpool players were watching now to see how much it means to us. Yeah, I don't know. I, I don't know whether the, the players probably do know how much it means to us, but they're just probably sick of playing this system and just totally demotivated and probably can't see it themselves. They probably can't see it winning like we can't see it winning. I don't know. I've done enough videos to tell people how, how, how much I actually do. Uh, Beasley up front, uh, alarm, up front alone, the fans would have stopped that. I think we definitely would. I think we would. Well, here we are. Pepperland Rock One. Greetings from Venezuela. Hello. I love the name. Pepperland Rock One. And uh, for anybody who's coming on this channel, we need some subscribers. We need to get to 10,000 and maybe the club will notice me. I don't know. YouTube notices you. It's, it's a massive milestone. I've said it before, but 10,000 subscribers is like huge. It's huge. You know what I mean? It's like a, 
there's not many that I think there's four percent of four percent of YouTube of, of every YouTube channel that's ever started has got to ten thousand and we just can't I can't get it to eight. I've been trying to get it to eight for I don't know about six months. I'm stuck on this. I'm stuck wherever I am and I need to somehow get it up to ten thousand and then YouTube will start helping me a little bit more than it does. But uh, Stephen Roberts says Simon Southern needs to come out and be honest. We can all see it's going wrong, so you must see it. Just tell us the plans. Indeed. Indeed, we've been asking for that for ages, haven't we? Just tell us, Simon. Tell us. Talk to us. Talk to us like we human beings. Talk to us like you. You're our mates down the pub, and we're all Blackpool fans. Just tell me what. Tell us what the plan is. Because we don't know. We're watching. I don't know what. I don't know what we're watching. What are we watching? What is this? What is this absolute utter crap <laughs> that we watched on? Bank Holiday Monday, it was raining. You know, the whole day it was a Bank Holiday Monday. You know how much Blackpool needs like sunny weather on a Bank Holiday Monday, doesn't it? For all the families to come in and every Pleasure Beach to be buzzing and the Golden Mile all buzzing and the the beach and selling deck chairs and ice cream and all the rest of it. It just so relies on weather and it was just instantly on it. It was a bad bank holiday weather day. It was raining all day. I was walking to the match. I had to, I had to film it on my phone. I couldn't film it on my camera because my camera can't get wet. So I did it on my phone. It did, it did a decent enough job, didn't it? But, but uh, yeah, it was wet. It was miserable. And the football was just wet and miserable to go with the day. It was bloody awful. Oh, how I wish we had Saudi, Saudi owners. I must admit, there was a time, wasn't there, when they were looking for new owners, when there were some Saudi delegates or something were coming to look at the airport, wasn't there? You remember? They'd flown over to have a look at the potential. And there is a lot of potential, or there was a lot of potential there with the airport to go international. And I actually wanted somebody to come in who did want to invest not only in Blackpool Football Club, but saw the potential in Blackpool as well. Because there's so much potential here. You know what I mean? There is. There is a lot of potential in, in, in Blackpool. Uh, there's so much run down, you know, decent hotels. Well, you can see decent hotels are coming in now, aren't they, because of the conference centre, but it needs more, more and more of that, you know, because people need good... I mean, there's hardly any... They very rarely build a hotel with a pool. I don't think a hotel's been built, but you need that kind of thing, don't you? You need quality entertainment. We needed those casinos. I know there was a thread on the view from the tower about the casinos, but we did need it. wasn't the particularly the casinos, but the what what was coming in with them, all the big shops, you know, all, all the big entertainment, all the Vegas shows. It, it was sad we didn't get it really because the it wasn't just Blackpool that missed out on that. It was the whole of the UK missed out on a nice seaside resort to come that was mind blowing. And it would be 20 years on now. It'd be mind blowing. You wouldn't, you wouldn't even recognize it. Hello, Marty. <laughs> I don't know if I want to say hello to you, uh, seeing as you're a knobber, but hi anyway. Um, yeah. So, 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 so Michelle Lai says, wish I had that, that Saudi bank account. Yeah, indeed. Um, but, but, you know, you're you're an Everton fan, um, semi Charm Life, and it's not been great, has it, for you getting rich owners in? It's been a bit of a problem. <laughs> My guy says, Simon, get your head out of your own arse and sort this shit out before the club ends up in a world of trouble. The Asian consortium, hopefully one day, it will rise again. Yeah, well, they were, weren't they? They were definitely looking at the airport and all the potential there. And there was that other guy, wasn't there as well? Henry, somebody or other. He was another one looking at the airport. And I thought Blackpool, yeah, I thought there was a potential there for the club. And and the club would have probably benefited from an international airport, wouldn't they? You know, it would have been a bit more of a, a better destination to come. Somebody was saying, you know, would, would players choose Blackpool? as a place to come. Well, it would if it was, if it was banging and brilliant, wouldn't it? It was bloody Vegas shows everywhere, and it was the you know it was like like Las Vegas. They want to come in and out then, wouldn't they? London Goose says the club is the heart of our town. The council really messed up by allowing the oysters to do what they did. Yeah, they did. I, I don't. But then again, I, councils councils should just stay out of bloody everything for me. I don't, I don't think it's down to the council. The EFL that is down there. Zen Photos said yesterday's performance was just awful. Struggling to even find another word to describe it. Were the team all hung over? <laughs> it's like Christmas, isn't it? They just played terrible, didn't they? Or they were still half asleep from overindulgence of chocolate and fizzy pop. 
I was very wonder if they were on the Easter race, wasn't it? Because they just they were so they were just disjointed, weren't they? There was no cohesion. There was balls to put through to players that were nowhere near the player running through, and just we just didn't look together as a team, did we? It was absolutely woeful. Michael Haig says, I personally think that the interim board made the wrong decision in offering the ownership to Sadler. Big mistake, as we're now starting to find out. Well, we're stuck with it now, aren't we, Michael? So we can't keep moaning about it. We've got him, and we've just got to hope that he does all these things. We've got to hope this training ground gets done. We've got to hope this stand gets done. It has to be done. They literally have to be done. And I sometimes think that if, you know, we saw that the East Stand was, you know, being taken down and the new one was coming up in its place, I think it would lift. I think it would lift similar to the way the new stands, you know, you think how much the South Stand lifted the club when Bal when, when Valeri Bellicon came in and helped, you know, and built and paid for the South Stand. It, it, it lifted. It lifted the club. It did. It's things like that, things like that, that, you know, that make people dream and make people believe nothing's happening. Nothing exciting is happening, is it? We're just plodding along, aren't we? We've had a terrible disaster season in the championship and we're plodding along in League One, struggling, you know, going to teams like Burton Albion as if we're going to play Manchester United and Exeter and all these places, you know, Exeter. We were terrified of Exeter. Look where they are, Exeter. We were terrified of them. Opening game of the season. We really struggled against Exeter. They, you know, they bossed us that, that, that day and we were, we were lucky to get away with a draw. And it's been like that all bloody season. Yeah, you'd think that, wouldn't you? You'd think he'd know her. You'd think running a, a billion dollar hedge fund that he'd actually know some money people who he could maybe... Talk around to buying in as minority shareholders with him and bring in the cash injection that he so clearly needs that he I clearly don't think he has, you know, and, and just take a leaf out of the Oyston's book. You know, they did that, didn't they? They would never spend any money, would they? Do you remember, you know, buying Andy Watson? You know, the fans bought Andy Watson. Do you remember? It was bloody ridiculous, wasn't it? You know, ooh, Andy Watson, superstar. But like the fans. The fans bought him. We love. We kind of. They even taught the fans into buying him, didn't they? They'll put in half. Was it? I can't. Was it? They put in half if we put in half. But yeah, he, he was ours, wasn't he? So they would never spend any money, would they? I mean, you know, the biggest signing for years and years was Malkin, wasn't it? Two hundred thousand. He he was like, you know, the biggest signing we'd ever sign. But the oysters would never spend any money. The fax machine would never be working on. They were just, you know, I remember Carl wouldn't build the South Stand unless it all got pre-let. I mean, how could you sell pre-lets on something that that people don't even, it was garbage. But the minute they brought Bellacon in and he started, you know, he, he built the South Stand, didn't he? He paid for that. He paid for Adam. And he, he changed everything, didn't he? Ian Everett. You know, when he came in, that was a massive, Casper's Gorks. I mean, how good was he? How good was he? You know what I mean? He just made such a big difference. And that's I think that's what Simon Sadler probably need, needs to do. He, he needs to get some back in. So if he can't fund if he can't fund a push to get out of this division, and it needs a push. You can't get out of this division unless you push for it. Barring a miracle. I know Ian Holloway did it, but he didn't just do it. I know it was a miracle, but Bellacon helped a lot in that with the players that he brought in. So it wasn't all down to Ian Holloway. But you've got to invest. You know, that that was when when, Val, when Valeri Bellacon came in and said, I'm going to get you in the Premier League in five years. He did it. And he did it because he was ambitious enough to set off with that goal and do it. And he did the things that needed to be done. He built the South Stand and he, and he invested in the team. And you have to do that. If you don't do that part of it, you are not going to get out of this league. You are looking for a miracle and miracles don't happen very often. You make your own look in life. You know, you make your own look in life as a football owner. If you need investment to help you make that look in life, then that's what you need to do. Simon. 
Yes, Peter Donnelly says the uh, planning permission for the training ground is going before the wire council tomorrow. And I do believe it's expected to pass, but never, you know, nobody expects the Spanish Inquisition. Nobody expects the Andy Watson. Was that the game? I always just said get 5,000 a game and we buy a player. My memory is vague, but I do remember that. Yeah, yeah. Fans bought, fans bought Andy Watson. We did. Uh, yes, you can't go to meetings and say your piece. I did and got shot down by Sadler and his two lawmen. Yeah, but yeah, but you can't be too negative and there's ways of getting things across that you, you've got to get, you've got to be clever and you've got to be smart. You have to be clever and smart and you can't go shouting people down because it don't, it, it don't work. So you've got to be clever and smart and, um, you know, the thing is, when when you're at a meeting talking to Simon Sadley and there's, I don't know, how, how many people were in the meeting? Tell me how many people were in the meeting. 20, 30, I don't know how, how many people were in the meeting. Let me know. Shout and rave on here to thousands. <laughs> you can shout on here and rave to thousands. You know what I mean? It's a bigger audience than that bloody meeting, I'm telling you. It's a bigger audience, a lot bigger audience. Uh, Zen Photos, is anyone else like me suspicious that changing the pie supplier has influenced the poor performance and disjointed football this is? You could have a really, <laughs> that could be a really, really important point there, Zen Photo. Yes, it could be the changing the pie supplier. Yes, ambition is the right word and so is invest. Absolutely. If you have ambition, you have to invest. I've said it before on A View from the Tower Basil Robbie, when when Wigan started investing in the team and spending, um, I, I think they bought a couple of players for a million pounds. It was like unbelievable. And they didn't get up. And Basil Robbie used to call them plucky little Wigan, PLW, because they'd tried pluckily and failed. But the next season, they shoved it right up him and they got promoted. And the season, either the season after or the season after that, they got in the Premier League. And then they even won the FA Cup. So good old pl plucky little Wigan went for it. And that was ambition. Valerie Bellicon went for it. It's ambition. He went for it. We know he did. We know he signed those players, don't we? We know David Bourne came in. We know Charlie Adam came in. We know DJ Campbell came in. Those players came in. We know he built the South Stand. And that was all ambition. And you have to have ambition. You have to have it. Blackpool has a lot of potential. The, the fan base is second to none. There's nobody like us. If you can in, ignite us, we can take us anywhere, but you've got to ignite us and you've got to have ambition to do it and you've got to spend money. And if you haven't got the money, then you need somebody to come in and help who has got the money. And like I said, I'm sure he must know plenty of billionaires. He must know plenty of billionaires. He needs to wine and dine them and get them in. Mike's DJ mini 2K drone videos. Hello, Mike. I'm going to have to start eating midget gems again to get through a match. Going to cost a fortune. It's already costing a bloody fortune to go to matches. But yes, you may well have to do. Um, Eugene McGeever is here. Hello, Eugene. He says, remember to smite, smash the like button. Indeed do. And if you haven't, you're new here and you haven't subscribed, help us get to 8,000. 8,000. We're like a few hundred away from 8,000. We're a few hundred away. I've been a few hundred away from 8,000 for what seems like an eternity. So 8,000 is the first goal, but 10,000. And we will have a party on this channel when I get to 10,000. Trust me, you think I had a party at 1,000. I'll have a serious party at 10,000. We'll, we'll have a big, we'll have a big massive dance off on the bloody com comedy carpet. Or something. We're going to do something big if we get to 10,000. Trust me. Oh, can you get me there? Then photo, he says, certainly that's it indeed. Gareth, Gerard's still here. Hello, Gareth. Uh, if Apter comes back, then Critch will probably ruin him by playing him in a shit formation and playing him in the wrong position. Our squad needs to clear out, including the manager. So come on, Simon Sadler, be brave and show leadership. Are you listening, Simon Sadler? Are you watching, Simon Sadler? We'll give you loads of advice, friendly advice. We're not slagging you off. Some people are slagging you off. I believe you've done your best. You know, I believe you've done your best. Could have used me a little bit more, but never mind. 
Mike's uh, DJ Mini 2K drone videos. One to three away games. This, this that, that's what you've done this season, is it? Bolton lost one nil. Port Vale lost four nil. Bloody hell. Yeah, yeah. I went to Burton Albion. Went to Wigan and Exeter. We got a draw at Wigan. Yeah, and Wigan one nil. Yeah, yeah. You're lucky charm there, Mike, aren't you? Eh? Bloody Jake Tong is here. What have we been saying about him? I'm going to support him in the bloody playoffs. Yeah, he is. Right. I have to say, it would take a huge implosion from us and Oxford for you guys. We haven't got a sniff, mate. We, we're all we're all supporting you. Listen, I, I've already said I had to put up with you in in Lincoln, almost in tears because we because we beat you. You need to. I need to support you and get you in, and and get you to get that dream that that we kill. So we're behind you here, Jake. Don't worry. We're not getting in it. We're all rooting for for Lincoln here. We don't want Bolton. We don't want bloody Peterborough. We don't want Barnsley. There's only one team that we're going to be supporting in the playoffs, and, it, and it's you. So there we go. You've got you've got us all behind you, Jake. We're definitely behind you. We are definitely behind you. Uh, right, Stephen Roberts says Simon Sadler says he's one of us. I I can't think of any BSC fan that would put up with this on the pitch. He does need to come out and speak to us. Indeed, he does. He. He needs to explain. <laughs> he needs to explain to us why he thinks Critch is the answer, doesn't he? Why the hell does he think it? What, 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 what is he seeing that we're not? What does he watch? I spent all this money on this club and bought in and, and was watching this dross. I, I, I'd be angry. I, I would be one angry mofo. Semi Charm Last is 8,000 subs, Lee. Come. To, Come to your home personally. Thank you for your support. Yes, and ten thousand, ten thousand. We ten thousand. We need for a big celebration. Eight thousand is just. It's just like that. It's it's like a milestone that I just can't get to. I just cannot get this extra. What are we on now? Seven, eight. Yeah, we're, we're getting closer, but we just can't. It goes up. It goes down. It goes up. It goes down. I get a few on, a few off, a few on. Look at it every day. It's not like I'm obsessed, but just eight thousand would be great, but. 10,000. Get get me to 10,000, please. God. <laughs> Subscribe. Uh, right. Uh, Gareth Gerard. In fact, there's 8,000, nearly 8,000 fans. So uh, subscribers already. So, so if you all ask a mate to subscribe, that would instantly be 16,000. If everybody invited a friend to subscribe, we'd have 16,000. That would be amazing. Uh, a million is nothing in these days of football, but how many times are we shelled out? All we ever do is shop at Poundland. Yeah, of course we do. We we don't shop for million pound players. We put bids in, but then they don't get accepted because they're just not quite enough. It's like we just do, we just kind of do enough, like we kind of don't really want to spend it, and we don't, do we? Yes, it's in the championship. Come on, indeed. Indeed. You deserve it. You've suffered. You've suffered enough. Yeah, Wrexham away will be bloody interesting, won't it, next season? It will be very interesting. They, they, they're doing fantastic. In fact, just imagine if we'd have got them as owners. I dream of that. I mean, imagine them being in Blackpool. You know, Ryan Reynolds and Rob McElhenney. Bloody hell. I, I don't know if you've watched Wrexham. It's absolutely brilliant. Welcome to Wrexham. It's a great show. It's brilliant. I just wish they were our owners. Jake Tong, yes, indeed. You remember that player final? You're all chanting Simon Sadler's name. Where has it all gone wrong? He keeps, he keeps getting the wrong managers. We should have got your manager, Jake. That's what it is. And we don't invest. He, does, he hasn't got the money to invest. It all went wrong when he decided to tell everybody that he, he didn't really have the money to build a, a training ground, a, a new stand and a team and spend money on the squad. That's when it all started going wrong. <laughs> it's as simple as that. And then he brought bloody Michael Appleton in, who you told me was great. It's all you probably listen to you, Jake, telling us all bloody Appleton was brilliant. Uh, Andrew Lowell says, What's our view of Derby in the three? What which three games? Three games against Derby. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, we did. We played in the cup game, didn't we? Yeah, yeah. Well, you're our bogey team. That's it. Don't matter. Don't matter. Y y you can put out 11 kids, you'll beat us. Um, I hope you do well. We like Derby. Got nothing against Derby. Hope you go up. Um, we've always said that you stood by us during our boycott. You came and stood and give the oyster and shit at our boycott. Stood, you know, shoulder to shoulder with us, and we've never forgotten you. So, we, and we never will. 
Um, Dave G said, it shouldn't be difficult for Sadler to find investors given his line of work, Lee. Well, that's kind of what I was saying, wasn't it? You know, the people he deals with, these bloody billionaires and millionaires, multimillionaires, surely there's somebody out there that he can coax into coming and joining him at a football club and putting some money in like bloody Valerie Bellacom did. Yeah. That, 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 that he helped the Oysters. I think Simon Sadler needs that help. Simon Sadler is scared to make a mistake. Well, he's making plenty of them, so maybe he needs to change that attitude because he's making lots, isn't he? He's not making good decisions, is he, really? He can't be happy with his football, surely. I'm miserable when I lose, and I don't own a football club. I only go and support them, but it ruins my weekend. God knows. If I owned a club, a football club, Jesus Christ, and I was losing, I put all that money in, and I had a manager playing shit football like this. And I backed him publicly on radio only like six weeks ago, was it, where he said, you know, six weeks ago, and what has, what has critically done? to repay that faith in him that Simon Sadler said on the radio. What has Critch done to repay that faith? He just says like that to him, hasn't he? Thanks a lot for backing me. I'll just play shite for you and let you completely down. And that's what he's done. Critch, hasn't he? Since that moment that Simon Sadler said, yeah, yeah, went on the radio, I'm fully behind him and all that. What has Critchley done to repay that faith? It's pathetic. Michael Haig says the club is flat at present. Things uh, need to change. And I've heard that there will be a backlash and that Sadler will address Critch's situation then and only then. Come on, Simon, you know it is best. Well, well, I'm saying it. I don't know whether that's true, but I think that's what should happen. I really do. I think he needs to, uh, yeah. I think he needs to, I think he needs to, to get Critch in and give him a complete and a bloody pants down thrashing, doesn't he? You know, I've I've gone on radio and said that you know I, I back you and all this, and you've and, and you've produced these performances since then. What the fuck is this, Neil? Is what I'd be saying. Steve Huntley says I may be wrong, but the only one million pound plus player we had was DJ Campbell. What at that time? Yeah, it was one point seven million with a one point seven million buyback clause, if you remember rightly. So they sold him back, so he never cost him a. He only cost him his, his wages, didn't he? That they got 1.7 million for him back. Um, now we are led to believe that Kyle Joseph was our, one of our biggest signings ever. We don't know because we don't know what the fee was for Jerry Yates. We don't know if Swansea just gave him us for free, really, do we? We don't know. But they say he's the most expensive, but we don't know. Yes. <laughs> one bad Appleton spoils the bunch. I've got a thing for that uh, somewhere. I don't know what one of those does it. Tish boom. Anthony. Oh, no. Anthony Sykes says, just in Tenerife and I've watched this one play back and it's just not working. I feel so deflated. Oh, I don't know what that means. Can you not see us in Tenerife? Are you talking about me? Are you so I don't know. I don't know. You have to explain that, Anthony. I don't. Critch is a youth team coach or a, mem or a number two at best. I'm starting to think that. He was good in lockdown, wasn't he? There's no fans there. It was like youth team games. Uh, Kath, you're about 40 at the meeting. What did you mean when you said shouting your mouth off? I asked the questions I was asked to submit. They didn't like them. Sadler was the one getting clever. Maybe he was, but maybe it was just, I, I don't know. But, 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 but what I'm saying to you is at the end of the day, there's only 40 people there. It's 40 people there. 40. doesn't make any difference. These meetings are a waste of time. They are a waste of time. Because... They don't go anywhere. They don't go out anywhere. Nobody reads fucking minutes, do they? Who reads minutes? Who has the time to read bloody minutes of a meeting? It's all, you're all sucked into believing, oh, you know, we'll bring all the fan groups in and they'll all get a say. They, they don't give a shit about what, <laughs> they don't give a shit. <laughs> it's all just, I'll take this box and we'll meet the fans and, and we'll go on about the black fool, whatever it is. And we'll include all these native West Indians and Eskimos and whatever, all these minority groups. 
It's all just to divide you. It's, it's, it's dividing. I won't, even, I won't even get sucked into it. I won't get sucked into it. It's divisive. That's all it is. It's, it's, not, it's not Blackpool United. It's Blackpool divided. It, they're just splitting us all up into, into separate groups and making it even more difficult. So fall for it if you want to fall for it. Or have your say on here. You know what I mean? If we do more of these, you can have your say. Uh, right. Uh, when Critch went to Villa with Gerard, they played terrible. Almost the same players and they are chasing Europe now. That surely says a lot. Well, surprise, Critch was given a second chance. Yeah. Hmm. Indeed. Uh, Anthony Sykes. Go back. Uh, I can't remember what that was, Anthony. Was that the thing I couldn't understand? Oh, okay. Yeah. So, yeah. So we'll go back to your... Right. Okay. So Ansi says, just in Tenerife, and I've watched this wing back play and it's just not working. I feel so deflated. Yeah. So you're watching the game, are you? Yeah. Our game. Yeah. Which was, it, it was deflating. Uh, Duncan Ward said, I think Critch is wanting to be sacked and get paid off. How can you explain the team lineups? A positive, oh, only three games left to go. Yeah. Three home games left to go. Th three more things we've got to suffer. And one of them being the, the Codheads. In the tram stop derby that we all hate. Oh God, please let us send them down or something. Connor Ruan says, Chrisley isn't a manager, he is a tactic coach. I, I don't see him as an inspirer of men, a leader of men. You know, you watch Gladiator, don't you? You see Russell Crowe on that horse, you know, talking about, you know, Leave it all in the field and I'll see you in Elysium. You know, I'll see you when we're dead. It'll be a great day. And he inspired those men, didn't he, on that? To go and run into all that with those spears and, you know, a leader of men. And I, I've said it, if you've just joined the st stream now, go and watch it. I did a video on the 30th anniversary of the Wembley promotion in 1992, like David Ayres, Dave Bamber, Trevor Sinclair, Paul Groves, Steve McElhargy. I interviewed quite a few of them and they all, if you watch the interviews, they all say the same thing about Billy Ayer, how he made them feel 10 feet tall and able to do anything. And he inspired them to run through brick walls for him. And that's why they got promotion. And that's why they did it with a team of like, you know, Nobody's really were they? I mean, D Dave Bamba nearly got the golden boot twice, didn't he? Inspired by Billy Air. And we need that kind of Billy Air, don't we? I don't see Critchley as a Billy Air. I don't. I don't. I just don't. And I don't like his football. I hate his football. I, I honestly, I hate it. Absolutely hate it. Gareth Gerard should say, says that, uh, should, uh, should ask Critch why persist with a system that obviously doesn't work. I'm sure Simon Sadler wouldn't be a multimillionaire if he kept gambling his money on a system that keeps failing. Well, yeah, exactly. I mean, it clearly doesn't work, does it? Just game after game after game out. We lose, we lose, we lose. And he can keep saying he believes in the system, but I'm sorry. Um, you know, I've said before, you know, you can be sat next to a nine-year-old, can't you? You know, in the, in, in, in the, in the stand that going, he needs to change it, I think. We need to bring somebody on. It's not working. A little bloody nine-year-old could, can see it's not working, but for some odd reason, <laughs> the assistants and Chris with their iPad and everything else can't see it's not working. How? How do they not see it? Just. Yes, on my signal, unleash hell. Yes, indeed. And we will drink in Elysium or whatever it is. Yeah, I'll meet you all on the other side. A man that inspired people to go and do that. You need that, don't you? You need an inspiration. You need a, a manager that makes every player feel like he's better than he is. Ian Holloway did it. Ian Holloway did it, didn't he? You know, he... He actually convinced a bunch of players to not have a single bloody bonus payment the whole season, an appearance money bonus to all share in five million if they got into the Premier League. He convinced them to do that and they did it. He convinced them to take that deal. You know, don't have any, there's no bonuses for the season, no, no playing bonuses, no win bonuses. But at the end of the day, if we get in the Premier League, you're going to get five million pounds. 
Let's just try selling that to a bunch of Blackpool players. But he did it because he was inspirational. He was inspirational. We haven't got anybody bloody inspirational. Anthony Sykes says, I've stuck my Critchley, I've stuck by Critchley throughout the season, but watching his tactical play, I've something. Uh, Critchley, uh, I've N. Let's go on somewhere. Uh, so, Semi-show asks, Chrisley, are you not entertained? No, we are not entertained. It is not entertaining. It is bloody miserable. Yeah, it's not really. It's not, it's not really, it's not really at all. I'm, I'm sure, I, I don't know if Simon Sadler is entertained, but if he is, God knows what he's watching. Anthony Sykes says, watching Critchley's decisions in players disappointed me. The players we have, we should be challenging. Well, yeah, I mean, we all, we all believe that, didn't we? I, I said that on, on the intro to the video, which I hope you all watch. And I've said before, even if you don't want to watch it, stick your phone on silent, let the video play through and get me some views. Cause Christ, nobody watches them when it's nil nil and YouTube just goes to me. You are shit. And we're not promoting your videos anymore because nobody watches them. So for God's sake, watch them. It's important. I know a lot of people come up to me and say, Oh Lee, I can't watch when we lose. Well, don't watch them. Just, let it play on your on your phone or something. Just put your phone on the side, let it play in silence and don't even watch it, but watch it. Give me the view. <laughs> and then YouTube doesn't start punishing me like it is at the moment. And the, the less views you get, the less it pushes it out and the harder it is. And the, I'll never get to 8,000 unless you guys start watching the videos all the way through. Uh, Philip Darlington says, I wonder if Dobby was number two, if we would play football, you'd... Uh, I wonder if Dobby was number two. If we would play football you like. Well, maybe. Maybe if Dobby was, num was number one, <laughs> we might play football we like. I just think that I actually, looking back on it now, those those games with Dobby, we did play really well. You know, we did. He did lift them. He did motivate them, didn't he? He did something. He changed the system. We were very unlucky at Luton. We should have won at Luton. We were winning at Luton and they were panicking and they just got that silly free kick right on half time and it, it knocked us back and then they scored straight again in second half and we, you know, we, we, we huffed and we puffed and really Luton were hanging on. We, we should have, if we'd have won that game at Luton, we'd have stayed up and he was unlucky in the game against Millwall, wasn't he really? You know, we nearly, we nearly did the great escape with him, didn't we? He just didn't give it him soon enough. You know, McCarthy just went on too long, didn't he? he it was terrible. Stephen Roberts says, "Do you think Critch? Do you think Critch been told we're we're safe? Just go to the end of just go to just get to the end of the season, and start again. It's cheaper in League One than Championship. You know what? If that is the way that we're thinking, if that is true, if that was truly the if that was truly the way that they're thinking in this club, that it's cheaper to be in League One than the Championship, then." Just get, just go, just please sell the club and go. Because if that is your ambition, there's only one place where there's money in football, really. And one of them is the championship, but even that's a struggle. But the only place with money is the Premier League. If, if you're sensible enough, you get in there and don't like take the money and run kind of thing and just give it a go. Don't spend too money, too much money and don't, get into the ridiculous, you know, the ridiculous wages and just give it a go. There's loads of money there, isn't there? There's loads of money there. You, you could set yourself up for life. Just, I mean, that was, that was what I wanted to be a boing, boing club. I would have loved that. Just go up, give it a go, come back down with 150 million, give it a go, go back up, come back down with 150 million. Just keep doing that. And, and, and until you cash rich, you know what I mean? And then do whatever you want. But, um, no, if it, if that is if that is how the club are thinking, don't go for it. Don't try. Then get out of our club, because because that doesn't match the ambitions of any of us fans, does it? We don't want to hear that. I heard that. You know, I heard something very similar to that when I when, when I met when Jane and I went in to see Ben Manford, Ben Mansford and Brett Geraghty at the club, and he said that the ambition is you know. We're not big enough and the ambition here is to just finish one place above relegation. That was the ambition last season. That's that's what they set out and that's why they got relegated. Because you can't have that ambition. If that's which is what I told 
then Man City tie him. I said, well, that isn't how Blackpool fans think. We believe we can get in the Premier League. We don't, I don't want to hear that you think we're just going to finish one point above relegation. That is not what I'm buying my season ticket for. And I had a, I had a real kick off in that meeting. Honestly, I kicked off. Because it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. You've got to have ambition. There's no point in buying a football club if you've, if you've no ambition. You know? If you're a mad Blackpool fan, you want to see Blackpool Football Club in the Premier League. No, it's... I can't accept that. I can't believe that, they, that that would be it. But if it is, it's terrible. I kind of think Southern and Critchley are cut from the same cloth. Both seem to be a bit quiet, shy disposition. Neither are in the least bit inspiring. And this is reflected on the pitch. No, he's no, he's he's got zero. I, well, I got a bit of personality out of him. Didn't I play pool in Swansea? Yeah, I got a bit of something out of him then. He didn't want to originally talk to us. <laughs> He changed his mind. <laughs> he originally went like, no, no, no. That's oh, a funny story, honestly. I was up in that. Jane and I, Jane had gone to see uh, Father Christmas coming to the pier and, and he, he was late. So we we're having a wander around the pier at Swansea on Bumble's Pier. And then we went in the arcade and then there was a little upstairs bit with a uh, temping bowling and some pool tables. And I was up, I was up there just filming some B-roll for, for the football tourist guide and Simon Sadler come up and, Immediately, they went, what are you doing here, Lee? That was the first thing. And then they said, no filming, no filming. That was his first thing. And I said, oh, don't worry, Simon. You know, I'm well aware, no filming. I get it. It's all right. So I walked down to, to, to Jane. And I said, oh, you won't believe who's up there. And she guessed a few things. And eventually she guessed Simon Sadler. I said, yeah, but he doesn't want us to, he doesn't want us to film anything. I said, it would be really good. And, and she said, oh, well, what a miserable git. And then... She said that he kind of came down the stairs and said, "Oh, I'm, I'm being, I'm, I am being miserable." He said, "Come up, come up, and we'll do a bit of a scene." And we did the pool scene. And it was great, wasn't it? Everybody loved it, didn't they? You know, everybody was like, "Oh, look at him, Blackpool lad playing pool in a in an arcade," and that's that's it. I showed him. It's probably the only video that you've ever seen of him just being one of us. Everything else is all blooming scripted and. Yeah, I got him perfectly, and uh, I, I'm very proud of that video. And I was pleased that he did it with us. And it's the it, it's a one off. <laughs> it's never going to happen again, is it? Won't go. Won't go after he's watched this stream anyway. Uh, yes, I yes, I've said that. Yes, Charlie and Dobby would be great, wouldn't it? Together at Bloomfield Road. Um, yeah. I think that I think that'd be a great combination with with Tomo. We've already said that Charlie Adam and Tomo and Dobby. How good would that be? Or DJ Camp? I don't know. Well, should Dobby be put into Chris's position? Well, I don't know. Charlie was doing. Charlie was as, 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 has performed a few miracles with Fleetwood, hasn't he? I thought, to be honest. I'm still not 100 percent sure he's not going to get get him out of it. I mean, he's given him a real bollocking, hasn't he? Which is really what Critchley should have been doing in his interview after yesterday, shouldn't he? He should have been giving him a total bollocking. Because they didn't, even if the system wasn't right, even if the players weren't right, even they, you know, what he'd set up wasn't right, the players didn't try, did they? You can't honestly come out of that game thinking that those players yesterday gave 110% and tried. They just looked like it was just a training match for me half the time. They didn't, and until the last, Five, ten minutes, but it's too late. It's just all too late. And they nearly conceded, didn't they, at the end? It, it, only the woodwork saved, saved us losing that game. Uh, yes, Dobby, you would like us to see as manager. Okay. Peter Brown. Hello, Peter. He says, it almost feels like we have actively decided to not go for the playoffs. I mean, there could be truth in it. I don't know. Maybe they don't want to get promoted. Maybe it is good to stay in league one because you don't have to spend a load of money and he hasn't got a load of money but for god's sake then if he, if we haven't got the money and we can only afford to stay in league one then bring somebody in who can help like the oysters did but just don't fuck him off like the oysters did and bloody freeze him out and have him suing you through court like the oysters did you know what i mean it, it, that was a mistake they, they should have carried on with him and let him keep building and building and building gone back you know, the, the greedy pigs could have gone to the trough year after year after year if it had gotten back up again and again and again, but, but, but they didn't, did they? So they couldn't get up 
once they once they froze him out, they couldn't get us back up. Only Bellicon could do it. Um, Alan, Alan James Kilgrai said, hundred percent, sell up and go." Yes, exactly, hundred percent. Agree with me, Lee. They are a waste of time regarding the minutes. They're, they're not a true record. Yes, yes. Well, I better not talk about the SLO throwing me under the bus like he did, but he did. He threw me under the bus, didn't he? I um, I'll tell you how how he how he threw me. I'm going to say it publicly because it's pissed me off, and it's about time I said something about the SLO. But um, I was getting in the early days. Um, some stewards were uh, down at the front and they were saying something to the effect that um, follow Lee Charles round at half time. And, and, and this was before lockdown. Follow him round, see what he's doing at half time. And if you're doing anything legal, confiscate his camera. And somebody at the front heard them saying that. So I, I got an email saying, oh, by the way, there's some stewards are, are, are following you. you know, have you done something wrong? You know, they're talking about confiscating your camera. So I wrote, I sent an email to the SLO and I said to him, I've heard that the stewards are talking about me and wanting to confiscate my camera. Can you have a chat with Simon Sadler and find out? Um, or, is it, you know, if they don't want us to, to do this, if, if, if it's bad, then I'll, I'll stop doing it. I, you know, I don't want to be doing, I'm here to try and promote the club. I'm, I don't want to upset anybody. So can you find out for me? Yeah, of course I will. I'll have a word. Get, get an email back from uh, the SLO saying, uh, no, you're absolutely fine. We'll sort the stewards out for you. Simon Sadler watches your videos. Carry on doing what you're doing. Yeah. And when it all came down to this thing, of, you know, posted on a view from the town about how Lee and Jane been, you know, banned and stopped from filming, he came on in the thread and said, nobody has ever been given, nobody has ever been given permission to film. And yet, he knows because he sorted it out for me. He's the one that spoke to Simon Sadler. Has he conveniently forgotten that? I don't know, but he just threw me under the bus and I've been upset about it ever since. So I, I finally said it. I wasn't going to say it, but yeah, I've said it. And, and, that, and that's exactly how it went. That's exactly the message I got. And I'll tell you what, I never got any trouble with the stewards after that. In fact, they used to come over and talk to me. And, Hi, Lee, all right. You know, the same guy that was really giving me shit used to come and talk to me because they got sorted out. It all got sorted out for me. So... Yeah, I, I don't tell lies. I don't tell lies. And, and, and that's exactly how it went. And, uh, you know, when I said we had permission, we did. I'm not bothered about it. When we went into the meeting, we said to them at the meeting that, to be honest with you, I actually prefer not putting the match footage in. I prefer it. It's, it's not as much aggravation for me to try and film because cause to get the highlights, you know, to, to not miss goals and miss all the highlights, you've got to film everything and keep deleting. And it's just... My hands are freezing sometimes in the cold and it's really hard. And I, and I just like talking to you guys. Like we like talking in, in in lockdown. You know, we like talking to you. And so that's why, you know, we do it the, the way we do it. And I think when we got the reaction where we scored in the last minute, Jane went absolutely mental. I mean, she went absolutely mental when we scored that late winner. That's one of the best scenes I've ever filmed. I've, I've ever filmed. Uh, and it showed more of the emotion than... You, you can see the goals. You don't need to see the goals on the Charles TV. You, you, you can see them, but you, I want to show you what it's like all around us, and I'm, I'm quite happy to do that. I don't need to film, get match footage. You know, I like to get a little taste of the atmosphere and maybe something blurred in the background or something, but, but I'm not bothered about match footage as, as long as you know we're in the ground and doesn't need it. I actually like it like when you get my live reaction. Right. Um... Right, Simon, uh, Rob C says, Simon said himself, if you don't do it this year, Critch has to do it next year. So we know he is here until at least uh, sometime next season. Yeah, but he, he said that a few weeks ago, but as, as Critch finally, I mean, I was still, I was still believing a few weeks ago. I was still believing we could do it. I'm not now, but I was still believing. And the last few weeks have actually traumatized me, to be honest. I, I just can't believe what I've been watching. And I'm sure Simon Sadler can't believe how bad it, Critchley's performed since he backed him publicly on the radio. So I don't know. Yeah. The whole club does feel off at the moment. Can't put a finger on it, but something just doesn't feel right from top to bottom. Indeed. It doesn't They basically hate the fans. Don't they? I think that's the problem. The haters. <laughs> they, do. they don't like us. 
Right, uh, Gareth Jarrah says, get Holloway back as a director of football and let his love of our club inspire a new manager and squad to rise above and beyond. Imagine Dobbs and Adam being supported by Holloway. What a possible dream team. That could work, I must admit. There's a lot of fans won't forgive bloody Holloway, will they? They won't forgive him for what he said back in the Oysters and actually, you know, really publicly slating us off for our protest. Mm, he's not done himself any favours with that, I'm afraid to say. They're all ready for the end of the season, but why are they? Why? There was still a chance. That's what I'm saying. There was a chance. There was a bloody still a chance. I was still believing that maybe, just maybe, we could get the four wins on a run and suddenly throw ourselves back in the mix. I don't know, but there was still a chance. I haven't given up. They obviously have. Uh, Stephen Roberts says, I think someone at the club doesn't want Dobby in the hot speed. Well, you think it. Not necessarily. But won't get rid of it. It'll upset fans. That's why. He's where he is. So, right. Okay. So, what they put him back as you? I think didn't Dobby want to go back as youth coach? I, I don't know. I think somebody asked him at an airport, didn't they? He was going on his holidays. He said he didn't really want it. So, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, Gareth Gerrard said the players probably love Critch because he never bollocks them and gives them home truths. But then again, nobody above Critch is giving him home truths or rollickins. They all probably pat each other on the back saying, Aren't we all doing well? Well, yes. I was saying that on the other stream. Any one of us could have been in the dugout with Critch at Blooming Derby and be saying to Critch, boss, I think we need to change something. This isn't working, Critch. Can you not see? We don't look like we're going to score. You need to change something for God's sake. Any one of us would have done that, would have stood up to him and said that. Um, C says the story you just said about the SLO sums up my point about the club being rotten at the moment. It just feels like nobody's on the same page. And it's causing a horrible atmosphere. Yeah, well, it is. I mean, it really, I, I've, I've got to be honest. Uh, I've got to be honest. It upset me. It did upset me because, because I knew I'd, you know, he'd sorted it out for me. You know, he had sorted it out for me. I'd asked him nicely and I was prepared. You know, I said to him, if they don't like these videos and he come back and he said, yeah, don't worry. Simon Sadler watches all your videos. He loves them. And uh, we will sort the stewards out. And they did sort the stewards out for us. We didn't get any more asshole. It's just, it's a true story. Uh, I wasn't lying. Uh, you know, that is exactly what happened. And if he denies it again, then he's a, a, an even bigger two-faced liar. He might have been forced to say that on behalf of the club that nobody's been given permission. But we were. We, they said they were happy for us to carry on. Even in the meeting when we went to see Brett and... Uh, ben, you know, they said to us, basically what, what they said to us at the meeting was because we, this is it, word for word, because, is what Ben Manster said, because we turn a blind eye to the match footage, if you want to have a rant and say anything controversial, you have to ring Harry from the media team and make sure that your facts are right before you start having a rant. That was their point. I said to them, stuff that, <laughs> basically, I don't want to film match footage. I've already made that decision that I don't want to put this shit match footage in. It destroys everything I do. I want to do it in a different way. I want to show the reaction in the stands and the fans and show us. It's all about us. It's not about you. It's not about Blackpool Football Club. It's actually about me and Jane and the fans and how we are. I don't want to show it all. So stuff that we're not putting match footage in. And I certainly don't want to be ringing bloody Harry all the time to get any facts because, you know, you don't pay us any wages to do this. So, so forget that little, you know, that little bit you got over us. We're not filming match footage anymore. And we told them that straight in the meeting. That's that, that was our meeting with them. Uh, and that's it. Obviously, this year there's been the thing with the EFL, and they have contacted me. You know, rule me to say, you know, the EFL, that, you know, are not allowing footage in. And I've said, well, there's no footage in. We've already, I've already told you, don't want it in. We're not doing all that filming and showing, and we're not doing it. You know, we'll just try and get the the fan. What I'm trying to do half the time is get the fans jumping up for a goal. You know, so I'm, I'm trying to get that moment for you, and they don't score. But yeah, they, there you go. So that's even more. Uh, it'd be a team of three for me, Avo, Tomo, and Dobby. Yeah, I don't think Charlie has a te temperament or enough experience to be successful as a manager. Yeah, well, he's not done too bad, though, has he? How many of our players would you keep in the team for next season? None of them. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> 
I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I think they've all got potential, but I just think they're all playing terrible. I think they're all playing rubbish. They're not playing, are they? They're not playing. They're not playing, looking like they're wanting to die for the manager, are they? You're right. Rob C says, uh, this stupid formation is the biggest problem we have had all season. Can't believe in a whole season. Nobody's challenged Critch and told him to go back to basics. Well, it, 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 I, I can't even believe that Critch hasn't challenged, challenged himself and thought to himself, you know what? This isn't working. It's worked at home. It has worked at home. A lot more it's worked away, but certainly away. You'd have to be looking at yourself and thinking, you know what? It's not working, this. It's really not working. I keep losing. You know, surely his wife, I've said this before, when he goes home, you know, have you, have you gone on, Neil? Lost one nil. Well, lost one nil again. <laughs> yeah. So what do you think, Neil? Do you think it's the system? No, no, I've told you it's not the system. Are you sure, Neil, it's not the system? Because I do, I have started going on a view from the tower. And it seems to me that a lot of fancies to think it's your system. I don't, you know, I don't want to get into an argument with you, Neil, but, uh, oh, do you, do you want toast? Well, have you not thought, Neil, that maybe this system doesn't work away from home and <laughs> you need to think of something else? There's all the systems. Is there only this one system? I don't know much about football, but, you know, I do. I'm, I'm pretty sure when you used to coach the under 23s at Liverpool, you did used to coach them different ways of playing. I'm, I'm sure you just didn't used to stick to one system. Did you, Neil? Did they teach you out on that? You know that you know that super super uh, coaching badge you got. Did they on that? Did they just tell you there was just the the one system, and you had to kind of stick by that, and you couldn't change anything. <laughs> it's just surely I don't know. Anyway, I'm I'm being mean. Uh, a back five should mean we are solid at the back, but for us we still concede terrible goals and we don't concede. We don't score many, so what is the point in it? Exactly. Attack is the best form of defence, don't they always say? Attack is the best form of defence. We just don't put enough pressure on the other team. We don't dominate them. We don't keep hold of the ball in dominating positions. You know, we can keep hold of the ball in non-dominating positions. We can pass it around the back and... People are quite happy to let us do that and we keep all the ball and get possession stats. But when we actually move into dangerous areas, we lose it very quickly. We lose it very quickly and we do that a lot. Publish the email. I wish I could. I wish I could. You're just going to have to take my word for it. I can't find it. It's just, it, it's just true. It's what I did. It, it, it might have been a, just like, like a phone message. I, I can't remember. But anyway, it, it, it was uh, Steve that sorted it all out for me. Mm -hmm. He's the only one I knew to contact, and he did sort it out. You know, it was sorted. It was sorted with no with no, with no problems. And um, yeah, it's sad. It's sad. I, I I I found it. It hurt me bad. It really did hurt me. I said I said to Jane, one day I want to say something about it. I've I bit my tongue for a long time, and I've said it publicly. Now you all know. Simon, sadly, if you're watching this, you know you said that to Steve Rowland, and if you didn't, Steve Rowland lied to me. And you know the stewards were sorted out for me. I never got any more hassle. Nobody followed me around at half time and confiscated my camera. They were all nice as pie to me. They used to talk to me. People that used to really give me trouble used to talk to me about football and all sorts. It was like, it was chalk and cheese. It changed overnight. Uh, right. Um, also, have we scored directly off a corner this season? I think we have scored from a corner. We definitely have because I was shocked. I can't remember when it was, but we did score from a corner. Fill out with the worst corners I've ever seen from a professional football team. Yeah, and, and also this pulling everybody back to defend corners when we could just leave Dembele up. For me, would be a great tactic, but we don't. Well said, Lee. Well, maybe I shouldn't be saying things like that, but it hurt. And it still hurts now. Uh, Stephen Roberts said, if there's one thing I've learned this season is wait till one hour before kickoff, see the team, then decide whether to watch on Tangerine TV. Yeah, I wish I had the luxury of that. <laughs> I wish I did to do that and, uh, and uh, yeah, not watch it. Right, how long have we been on? God, been three hours I've been here. Three hours. I'm sure you're all bored of it now. I, th I think we've done everything. There's nothing more I can say. We're all disappointed. Everybody wants Critchley out. <laughs> Everybody. I think everybody's hashtag Chris Lee out. Uh, hope you've enjoyed this stream. There's still 68 of you here. If, if, if carry on, I'll, I'll carry on going. If you want to, if you want to keep 
posting things on i'll keep going but it's, it's up to you just let me know if you want to get to bed uh kathleen wait said you should invite michael and i on the show it will either ruin you or send you to the skies the limit well you if you want to be if you want to be guests you can now come in as guests but you need to have uh, a good connection on your phone you need to have headphones uh, some sort of ipad or ipods or something so you can hear it so we don't get feedback and you can be a guest you you can just be you don't even have to come in with a picture you can come in as a phone call if you want you need to email me and give me your email addresses and i will send you out a link to come in because i'm not doing the the phone-ins in that way because they were just getting sabotaged all the time but nobody can sabotage me when i just give you a link to come in so anybody else, and, and that's for any of you out there uh, I'll, I'll stick the thing on here let, let me just quickly stick that on if you're still all here yeah so there you go would you like to be able to call into the show please email me at lee charles tv at icloud or lee at lee charles tv uh, for more information uh, I can set it all up for you. We, we can do a test uh, thing and you can come in as a, as a guest and you don't have to just l listen to me. So it's down there. If you want to email me, no, nobody has so far. I've asked numerous times. Nobody seems to want to have the bottle to come in, but if, if you want to, you can. Um, uh, and, you know, we can do the live phone-ins again when, whenever I can. You know, we can do them on a Sunday. I won't be able to do them on a Saturday because I'm DJing a lot now, but. Gareth, um, Gerard says, despite our decent home form, how many times have you come away from bloomers? Ooh, it's like, ooh, Gareth, it's like bloody nails down a Bloomfield Road thinking, wow, we played really well. There has been a couple of times, actually. There has been a couple of times where I've come out buzzing. At Bolton in particular, I was buzzing. Um, but yeah, there has been a couple, but not many. Uh, we'll always look weak defensively and Wickham could have easily scored hitting the bar and missing a sitter. They did miss two really good chances in the last 10 minutes. One they ballooned over the bar and the one they hit the hit the post and the crossbar at the same time. Our set pieces and corners are shocking and as about exciting as a goal kick. Well, that's the thing. You don't even get excited, do you? You don't get excited for one minute when we get a free kick or a corner because you know we're not going to score, don't you? You just kind of know we're not going to score. You don't even get any hope uh, Rick Rob C says, I think next season will be a big eye opener when season ticket sales are released. I kind of feel the same way. Steve Huntley says, cheers, Lee. Thanks a lot. I really enjoyed this again. Thank you. And thank you for sticking with it for three hours. <laughs> Rob C says, I could rant all day about the current issues. Do it daily with the lads at work. Yeah, exactly. So we can have more of these rants uh, videos. If you all like this sort of thing, just post in the comments after the video and say, you know, just post that you enjoy them and uh, you want me to do more and we'll do more of this stuff. I can do, I intend to do a lot more live streaming i've set everything up now to do more live streaming again and i've guessed in so i've set it all up with Streamyard. i've paid for the professional plan so you're on 1080p uh quality video it should look good um and you should be able to hear me good and i say we, we can get guests in again so we're going to be doing lots of this uh, duncan would if you want it uh, duncan was his Chris's favorite saying it's fine margins Yes, but those fine margins always seem to go against us, don't they? Not for us. It's not fine margins if you're beating teams 5-0. That's the problem. We're set up to try and win 1-0, sneak a goal, aren't we? Well, you know, if you, if you play a game where you only have two shots on target, it's not, it is going to be fine margins because you've got to score one of them out of two. If you set up a team to create 20 chances and, and they score five of them, it's not fine margins at all. doesn't matter about the referee. doesn't matter about anything. You've scored five goals. Nobody gives a stuff. You've won it. We, we won't even be moaning about the referee and decisions going against us because we scored five goals. But you haven't got the ability to do that. You don't set a team up to go at teams and dominate the game and put them under pressure and put them on the back foot and dominate and force our game on them. Yeah, all we do is pass around the back and they're all just happy to say, yeah, carry on. You know, I'll sip a bloody margarita goalkeeper, can't you, while you're all just buggering around at the back. I don't know which qualification you need to see that that's a great way of playing football. I, 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 
If that's how they're coaching people, it's no wonder England don't win because he, because probably probably Gareth Southgate's from the same bloody book, isn't he? Garbage. Who like you know? Who enjoyed Kevin Keegan? You know, for new who wanted Kevin Keegan to win with Newcastle? Everybody did, didn't they? Everybody wanted them to win because he wanted because he tried his bollocks off to win, didn't he? He tried to get Newcastle to win, and he, he nearly did it. Everybody loved El Tell, didn't they? Because he gave it a go. Gave it a go. The whole country was buzzing in Euro 96, wasn't it, with Altel? It was amazing, Terry Venables. We played so well. We were so unlucky against Germany. But do, do, did we hate that team? I know they missed on penalties, but did we hate them? No, we didn't. Because we, because we were the better team on that day. And sometimes football just doesn't go your way. And, and, and you know, you play Germany and then you get a look. But... Nobody, nobody in the country would criticise Terry Venables for trying to beat Germany. And that's what we all want to see. That's football, man. That's football, not this shite that's out of a book. It's garbage. We're watching it. We all know it's absolute dog shit. That yesterday was dog shit. And they can. Yes, they can. They can do it. Look at the Forest Games. We were brilliant, weren't we? So how, how do we not carry on like we played against Forest? I don't know. Stephen Robertson will beat Cambridge 6-0 and everyone will be here. Here we go to the playoffs. Truth is, they're gone. Yeah, they are. We won't beat Cambridge 6-0. It'll be a bloody miracle if we beat Cambridge 6-0. Uh, obviously, he says, you just know we'll win the next two to give us a glimmer of hope again and then lose to Carlisle to crash us back down to earth and we'll all be complaining again. I'd actually like us just to give us give me some joy to be honest and have some so I can make you a joyful video. Something you can watch that, that, that you'd enjoy. Rob C says we're lucky to get five shots on target most games, never mind five goals. Indeed. Indeed. Jake says we have no stability. All your work, honestly. We're very lucky to have this content. Major kudos for managing to keep producing your viz despite the intense frustration. I would have thrown my camera in the sea. I, 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 have, I, I have actually felt like that. I've, I've got to be honest. I've felt at the times just, why am I doing this? Why do I keep doing it? Why do I actually do this to torture people? Um, Rob C says, I'm worried about next season. Epitess will be gone. Wouldn't be surprised if Grimshaw gets a move. Gabriel's going. No Dembele, no Rhodes. Yeah, it's going to be a huge rebuild, and we certainly won't be blooming spending money on it, will we? Gareth Gerrard says, please, Simon, sadly, if you see this, just realise we all love our club, but hate when we are bit, hate watching what we're being served. Yeah, indeed. Right, we'll finish on that. Thanks a lot. I'm, I'm going to get off. <laughs> Three hours is long enough for anybody. Nobody's going to watch this to the end. <laughs> it's a long, long stream. But thank you very much for joining in. Thank you very much for liking the video. Please do. And for those people that are watching this on a rerun, if you watch this for three hours, then you are. Yeah. You maybe listen to it on 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 your car radio or whatever. But uh, thank you very much. Uh, it's been a pleasure having you all with me. And I just hope that um, things go right, things go better. And the stand going up brings, you know, just the news of a training ground and the news of a new stand and all that just lifts the club like the building of the South Stand did to get us in the, into the Premier League. You know, it lifted us. And I hope, Simon, if you're listening to this and you haven't got the money, get somebody in to help you out. Thanks, Semi Charm Life. Appreciate you coming on after work over in America. Really appreciate that. Jake says, thank you. Uh, Rob C enjoyed it. Thank you very much. Semi Charm Life repeats the mantra, like and subscribe. You need to get me to 8,000. We need 8,000 and then we need to get the dream, which is 10,000. If I can get to 10,000, Duncan Wood says, hello, Duncan. Says so thanks, Lee. Thank you very much. Steve Huntley says thanks, Lee. Thank you for for being here, and also Dave G. Thanks a lot, Lee. You're a top man. Well, you're a top man for still being here, Dave. So thank you very much. You're all top people, and I do it all for you. I do it because I enjoy it, but I do it because I enjoy doing stuff for you guys. Kind of uh, Jerry says thank you very much. Yes, you legend. Thank you very much. Thanks you, Connor. Thank you very much. 
I'm the goat, as they call me. <laughs> uh, have a drink. If only I, if only I did drink. I, Blackpool probably will one day drive me to drink, but I don't drink it. I'm, I, I never agrees with me. Cheers. Thank you very much. I will have my. Uh, what are we on? We're on um, cream soda tonight. So cream soda. So thank you very much. Thanks for your time. I'm going to get off. Thanks, Semi Charm Live. Cheers. Thanks a lot. I'm going. That's it. Thanks for your company. And uh, let me know in the comments below if you want me to do more of these sort of things. Go on, I'll finish on that then. I can't. If the players put half the effort in, you do. We would be top by a mile. Thank you very much. I appreciate the sentiment and the comment. See you all later. I'm going to get to bed. Got me up in the morning for work. So see you later. Bye.